everybody! It's Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. How y'all doing this evening? I decided to just, like, hang out and goof off tonight. Oh, Mike is here. Hi! Um, so I have this Macintosh SE Reloaded that we started doing on a live stream, started building up, and it needs to get done. Because I want, I want to eventually give it away as a cool little giveaway, but we gotta build it first, so that's what we're going to do tonight. I also call this the Joe is shirking his responsibility stream because I have a bunch of things to do. None of which I feel like doing right now, so we're going to do something else instead. We got about seven concurrent viewers right now, according to the little doobly-doo over here. We got Thomas is here, Adam, uh, McGee is here, hello, Mac84, hey, Steve, Sorcerer Stan, uh, Mike's Mac Shack will be here until he starts his stream. And then you'll all leave and go watch his stream because he's much funnier than me, but that's okay. Eric Sedge is here. Hello. So, uh, again, uh, we're going to be uh, just building the Mac uh, SE Reloaded tonight. Uh, I have most of the parts in to get that done. I might be able to actually get it done tonight. We'll see. Um, and depending on my interest level um, <laughs> of that build, uh, I may switch to uh, finishing some blue SCSI orders that I have and some other things that we need to do. Uh, before we re get super duper started, oh wow, the corner of my screen is suddenly of uh, my my screen here is cracked. Anyway, nice. Is that just the protective coating? I think that's just the protective coating. Great, cool, awesome. Win. Moving on. Anyway, what we were doing? Yes, we're doing the we're doing some um some uh, housekeeping stuff again. Thank you for our start. With. Thank you all for stopping by. Um, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. The like button in the subscription tells the YouTube algorithm that you like my stuff. And then it will show my stuff to people that watch other stuff that you watch, if that makes sense. And so that more people will see my content and I'll be able to share my wacky shenanigans with more people. And hopefully some of the stuff I do is intelligent and will uh, get out there to more people and help people fix their old Macs up and their old Apples up and their old K-Pros and all of that other stuff. Um, I am on the Twitters, which is right up there, if you want to uh, do that. You can also find me uh, on Patreon at Joe's Computer Museum. Just look for Joe's Computer Museum on Patreon. You can drop a dollar in the cup there, and that helps me fund this operation back here, which is super awesome. You can also uh, purchase cool little trinkets like blue scuzzies for your old Macs and um, uh, keyboard rep encoder replacements for Apple IIs and all types of really cool stuff. Nifty shirts. Uh, not this mammoth WVH shirt. This is mine and you can't have it. Um, but cool stuff like that over on jcm-1.com. That's jcm-1.com. And I'll add a little banner doodle so you can see it. Show it. See? Go there, and you can get cool stuff. And again, the uh, revenue from that helps me fund this operation so that it is, um, I aim to make it a, a net flat operation. Um, I don't aim to make a bunch of billions of dollars from it, but I, but I aim for it to help fund my hobby so I can keep doing this fun stuff and coming to you guys and sharing stuff and doing cool nifty doodles. You can go to jcm-1.com and get one of these. You want this cool lead braid that has this awesome logo on it? You can get one. And you can buy the kit, and you can build it, and make awesome, pretty lights. However, whatever you want to do, I got lots of cool stuff up there. So, that all said, let's get down to business. So, gosh, it's been a month or two ago. Um, on a random live stream, uh, I started uh, building this Mac SE uh, Reloaded board from Kai Robinson. Um, if you don't know what this is, long story short, uh, a very intelligent, very smart guy by the name of Kai Robinson. Um, there's the uh, information about it there. Um, more information right there about all of the people who helped to build it, including uh, Bruce Rain is on the newer version of this, but that's fine. Um, this board here uh, basically is a complete one-to-one, -one, or with some slight tiny modifications, one-to-one -one recreation of the original Macintosh SE board, which is this one. Now, I am building this SE Reloaded because I have this SE board, and you can see, look at the battery bomb. Look at it. It's over here. It's over here. Look at the battery bomb. It barfy. It's barfy. So we're going to be building a working board out of this non-working board. I have most of the parts to do it. It is going to be a super fun thing. 
Before we get into that, there's a couple other things I just, uh, I keep kind of going back and forth because uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I am a golden retriever. Um, I chase the bright yellow tennis ball that's in front of me, and I happen to look at my desk and look at the comments here, and I see a couple of tennis balls that require my attention. The first one, uh, speaking of things, uh, keyboard encoders, look at that nifty thing right there. This little wire-wrapped beauty. This is a replacement keyboard encoder for the MM5740 or 5470. I don't remember the numbers. Um, keyboard encoder from Nat National Semiconductor that was used in early Apple II keyboards, the sometimes called the Datanetics keyboards. It was used in uh, many of those until Apple switched over to the AY53600. Um, as I've stated before, I have a replacement for AY53600s. I've designed that a replacement. I've had it on sale for, gosh, a couple of years now. Um, not a hot seller, but people come to me and they get this because their encoder is dead. And this is a lot cheaper and more reliable than looking for some random rando encoder on the internet that may or may not work properly. So that's good. And also my replacement encoder allows you to not have to steal it out of a working machine, right? Um, that's what this aims to be, except for that one other weird chip that that, that one at a specific subset of Apple II has. So that will allow... Uh, a lot of those to be resurrected as well, which is going to be super duper duper. Um, that I have PCBs inbound from a PCB manufacturer. I have all of the parts I already need because it literally uses the same part set as this. It uses pretty much the same code just with a couple of the pinouts changed um, and the pin routing to, to, to do it because the those two keyboard encoders work functionally identical. So that is going to be super duper awesome. Another thing that people are mentioning, somebody mentioned in the comments, because it is coming up here in about eight days, give or take a day, um, is Maypro. It's Maypro. It's here. Um, you need to go like follow them on the Twitters. Here, I will put their name up there. Go follow them. It's Maypro on Twitter, because this May is going to be the first annual ever Maypro event, or Capros in May. Um, Sean from Action Retro had that idea kind of randomly when he was fixing his cursed K-Pro, and he saw that I had some K-Pro videos because he was searching YouTube on, uh, on K-Pros, and for some reason I'm like the YouTube K-Pro guy, even though I've done two videos that are really bad and like from 10 years ago, I don't know, whatever. And so he's like, hey Joe, I saw those, do you want to do a thing this year? And I'm like, okay, and so we're just kind of doing the thing. Um, I will say that he's done all of the work in Maypro, and I'm just here to try to help promote it. Um, it's, I'm not as involved with it as I am with March and Tosh. Um, but I am going to be, uh, participating in that. You can't see it, but right back there is my K-Pro 1, which is weird because it's the last K-Pro ever released. But my K-Pro 1 isn't really a K-Pro 1. It's a mix of like a 4 and a 4X. And it's, it's a mishmash of wrong parts, um, which is delicious because when you try to get software to run on it, you have to get software for the wrong machine. It's, it's weird, but I'm going to be working on that. Uh, this May. So that is going to be super awesome. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I have literally no plan. I'm just going to put it on the bench and we're going to figure some stuff out. I think I'm going to revisit identifying that K-Pro this year because um, since I did my original investigation, a lot of research has gone into figuring out what all the friggin' models are and what their, uh, how to identify your board and stuff. But back when I was doing it, none of that existed. So now I can come back around to that look at that thing and be like, okay, so this is what it really is. This is how we can, I don't know, soup it up, add a hard drive to it or some sort of solid state uh, storage like a compact flash. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll do the thing. So that's what's going on. So let's get back to what we are really doing. We are going to do Mac building Mac SE Reloaded. I'm going to put a little thing on the screen, a doodle. There you go. That is what we are going to build. So let's get down to it. Um, not much to it. It's just a bunch of friggin' soldering and then plugging it in to see what happens. So um, let me do the switch a doodle to the bench cam. There we are. So stuff on the bench. We've got the original, the original machine, the original, uh, uh, original whatever, which I'm going to steal some of these custom chips off of. But a lot of these other non-customs, like these, these chips right here, these four that are socketed, are going to come out and go right into here. Uh, all the non-socketed ones, with the, ex with the exception of some of these over here that are related to sound generation and I.O., um, 
are going to stay in this board uh, because I'm not a huge fan of removing and resocketing crap. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically how that's going to go. Uh, uh, on the last episode, uh, yeah, we populated a lot of the different uh, port connectors and all of that stuff, but we got a lot more to go. Um, I'm looking at this, and I am seeing that we got a couple couple thing of doodles here and there that uh, aren't uh, connected. There are. They have sockets where they shouldn't have sockets. Like there's a socket there that doesn't need to be there that we need to pull out. But that's that's a piece of cake. Um, that's supposed to take this little. I think it's a it's a magnetic uh, that's used for the ADB bus or something like that. But whatever. Um, so yeah, let's just let's get down to it and start putting more stuff in the board. Um, first things first. Uh, I think last time we uh, I was missing some of these sockets here because I just didn't have the sockets. So I have those sockets now. I have absolute shed loads of those sockets. So let's get those. I believe those are 16 pin sockets. And they are, I have a bunch of them. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Copyright strike. Two. Three. Four. Here, let's turn the camera out a little bit so you can see me a little better. There you are. Apologies if I'm not immediately responding to any chat messages. My uh, screen is way off to my right here and not within eye shot, so I can't really see it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yay. Six sockets. Up, up, up. Let's get things all heated up and ready here. I could have done this ahead of time, but I just decided to stream on a whim. Again. Golden Retriever, tennis balls. Um, Bruce! Hey, Bruce. Hey, Garth. How you guys doing? Welcome to the stream of doodle Just uh, putting together my Mac SE Reloaded just for the heck of it. Um, Adam said something. Uh, who said the SE Reloaded was fun to build? You said something. It's a red, yeah, it's a red two board without the, yeah, without the cut resistor uh, thing of doodle that goes over here to set the the amount of RAM or whatever. Yes. Uh, I believe this is also a Rev2 board because it also has the jumper instead of the, uh, instead of the, uh, the pin selection. So, or the uh, resistor selection. So let's get these in the board. Those are entirely wrong. Hold on. So I'm like, I need this type of socket. And I'm like, I'm going to get this type of socket. And then I'm like, I have none of that socket. I mean, I got plenty of them now. I just picked the wrong ones out of this, out of the group here. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, uh, uh. How you all doing? I suspect several of you had a chance to go to VCF East. I was not able to make it for multiple reasons, but that is okay. Uh, I should be at Kansas Fest this year. So if you're going to meet, if you're going to be at Kansas Fest. Track me down, say hi, take a selfie with me or something as if I were actually famous and important because it makes me feel famous and important. Let's see here. It's stream on a whim day, yes. Windows wants me to install updates, news. Windows wants me to install Windows 11, which I'm saying over my dead body or when I'm forced to. When I'm forced to is probably when I end up going uh, switching to Mac for my daily operations. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six sockets. Ah, ah, ah. There we are. Uh, here we go. I don't know if you can see here, I've got I've got sockets galore. I buy them in bulk. Um, and I've got them all labeled as to what's where and also... In the red here, I have it labeled the number of sockets that fit in each spot. So whenever I need to do inventory, I can just do a quick subtraction of what I actually have and do the thing. Wait, are these 50? So, wait, did I... Did I grab the wrong sockets twice? Okay, so this is an exercise in Joe being an idiot. So... I grabbed the wrong sockets the first time. These are 18s. I need 16s. I knew I needed 16s. I knew I did. Right? 16s? 
Those are, yeah, because these, these are 18s. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, 18, here, here, here. I need 16s, not 14s. Just, just... <laughs> Try again. Start over. Hi, my name is Joe, and I'm an idiot. I'm a famous person. Somebody badoo to me on the on the place of doodles. <laughs> yes. Um, I need to go back to that button. There we go. Nano Raptor is here. Hi, Dana. Hi, cat. Oh, yeah, he you, you wants you to load Monterey, and you're like, no. Yep. So I've got several uh, several relatively modern Macs, and I think the only one I actually have Monterey on is my newest MacBook Pro. My older ones, I think I haven't capped at Big Sur at the moment. Just to have some older support for some stuff with reasons. I don't know. So we'll get these sockets in here. You know, it only took me 20 minutes to get the right sockets, but whatever. Okay. Welcome to Socket, socket Population with Joe. One, two, three, four. Yep. Now, I don't really need to put these sockets in here. I could uh, just take the chips and solder them directly in but I am in the habit of putting sockets in everything. Because um, then it allows this machine, for example, or this board to be a diagnostic board for you. You could use it to swap chips in and out and all of that stuff, so yeah. Doobie, 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 doobie. Yes, I'm folding over the pins of the sockets. It keeps them from falling out. You have opinions about it, I'm sure. I don't care. I do it my way and it works. Socket pins are usually easy enough to get out as it is because they're thin and flexible. I'm not worried about the dend over technique in this case. Okay, do I have any other sockets that I need? I don't see any other sockets that I need. It's just those, because that's that's where we stopped last time, was those sockets. So let's get those smashed in there real quick. This isn't close enough. Give me the fuel extraction. Give. That's one. Oops. I broke my brand new rule already. I got gloves for doing soldering. Because I just want to try to limit any potential lead intake. So I should maybe put some gloves on. Glove gloves. There's one. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I wonder where my glove will go. Okay. Sockets are the best. Yes, cat. Yes, cat. Where's the fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so many essays being saved every day with these. Absolutely. See ya, Adam. Thank you. Yes, yeah, socket everything on your SE reloaded. Socket all the things. So where were we? We were soldering these. Yes. These are using these gloves is weird. Here, I need more extraction, please. Thank you. There we go. There 
there's one more socket done. And the other side of this socket. Next one. Welcome to, to boring socket, socket soldering .com. Actual boring may or may or may or may not be a thing. One last socket to do. Then we can start tediously stuffing other things in the board. Here's the upside too of a brand new board like this. If you populate the board and it doesn't work, it makes diagnosis really easy because you know it's something you did. <laughs> It's not like some weird phantom bad chip. Well, in theory, it's not some phantom bad chip or uh, anything like that. You got, you just didn't solder something right or you missed a component or something like that. So, okay, I'm just gonna put these sockets to the side because reorganizing them takes too long. What's next? What other bits and pieces do we have in here? Those are capacitors, uh, flip flops. Um, some of these might not actually go to this board. It's just, I got a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, I think like a lot of these are just spare components for myself that I all ordered at uh, Mouser all at the same time. Yep. Like, yep, I also got like stuff in here for, for um, terminating uh, 50 pin SCSI cables and stuff. I just have lots of extra stuff in this box. Um, these are serial sockets. We can put those in because why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. I got these parts, uh, from PE connectors or Phoenix enterprises. And the main reason is because they were cheaper by a large margin than anywhere else. Uh, Phoenix Enterprises, their connectors are insanely, insanely inexpensive. However, their shipping is expensive. So it only makes sense to buy from Phoenix Enterprises if, and only if, you buy a lot of things in bulk, which I happen to do. I buy lots of things like sockets and stuff. So because I buy lots of things like sockets and stuff, I can, I can order, you know, $30 worth of sockets pay $11 in shipping or whatever their charge is, which is way more than any place else. But I end up saving because I can get like the per socket cost down to something like, uh, down to like nine cents per socket. Whereas just about any other place you try to buy sockets from, they're like 20 to 30 cents per socket. So yeah, Phoenix Enterprises is your socket source. They're also pretty much the only place on the internet you can find these weird angled uh, RAM connectors here. So, yep. Uh-huh. Just putting the serial ports on because I happen to find them first. These go over here. Serial ports, serial ports. Fish heads, fish heads. Oh, wait. Wrong thing. Oops, that's not a bridge. Ah, fixed it. Fixed it. Now the big joints. These are the stress joints that hold all of the stress of the uh, connector. Okay. I might examine these under the microscope. These big joints don't seem like they're behaving themselves the way I'd like them to, but we'll see.
We're gonna check that under the scoop real quick. Nope, they're okay. It's the weird lighting makes them look weird. What are people saying in the chat? Something just good about sockets, pure wholesome, like I don't know, like bunnies maybe? Yes. Yes, anyone use fiber gloves instead of nitrile? I'm thinking of tight fitting thin cotton. Tight fitting thin cotton. Yeah, yeah. See, if you're using it, if you're using it just to keep the lead off of you, yeah, that would probably be just fine. Hey, Josh, how you doing? I don't see how anyone solders in gloves. Hey, this is my first time doing it. We'll we'll see. Um, could you think of Joe's average Mauser DK order price? The last time I placed an order on Mauser, it was six hundred something but then again you know i like uh you can't see it over here this entire bench over here behind behind the pumpkin tosh is just full of project boxes for like the 10 different products i sell so it, it it's it's fine all i see is joe wearing the murder gloves <laughs> so yeah yeah mauser shipping rates just just went up you use DigiKey. I used to use DigiKey pretty uh, pretty exclusively um, until I found that Mouser's uh, stock levels, prices per component, and shipping roll cheaper for me specifically. In my uh, different people in different areas of the country with different amounts of stuff that they order might get different pricing. So I'm not saying DigiKey is better than Mouser or Mouser is better than DigiKey. Uh, what I'm saying is Mouser in my particular case is just like the bee's knees to get everything from for my stuff. So, yeah. Continuing. What other parts we got to put on here? I don't know. We're going to dig through the bag until I find the next part. Uh, the PDS socket. There we go. Let's do that. Sure. Again, also from peconnectors.com. PE connectors. You can't see it. It's washed out. We're going to very carefully check that to make sure we have no bent pins because that's going to make life a pain in the butt for us. We don't. These, uh, I do not know if these sockets are keyed, so it is important that when you put this in, you take a look at the original socket. And you can also see, it's a little hard to see, but there's a notch here. And it also shows the notch on the silk screen to indicate which way this goes. Because this is a symmetrical connector, it is in theory possible to put it in backwards. You don't want to do that because then nothing will plug into the socket. That's your main thing, nothing will plug into the socket. So that will make your life a pain in the patoot. So we're gonna put this in. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of sticky tack and I'm just gonna put it on the bottom as a pressure point, just to, so the weight of the board pushes that down into the board. Then we're gonna tack a couple corners, make sure it's in place. And then we can just zip zoom right down each row. That corner and then you lift the board up and then you push down with your finger here you just push down squeeze it together not super hard you squeeze it and remelt it and that makes sure it's all the way up in there tack on on this corner let the gravity do the work of holding it in place tack the other corner pull that out Push it together, remelt it. You hear a little pop there? I don't know if you heard that pop that it pushed it in. Shut up, thank you. And then we check it and we make sure that it's level in all directions. It looks good to me. So then we solder the absolute crud out of this for the next 25 minutes. I've never uh, ever owned a card for the SE. I'm not sure if I'd either bother with soldering that connector. Okay, well, I'm going to do it anyway because I got it. Uh, Bruce, what I what I you may have mit, uh, missed er, uh, earlier is that I plan to give this board away. So if I'm going to give it away, I'm going to give it away complete. So that's what we're doing. But I'm moving through it pretty fast. I'm a pretty fast solderer. Won't take but a couple minutes.
every once in a while you'll see me duck over here to clean the iron. Uh, the iron can get uh, a little bit of oxidized, uh, uh, oxidized, what do you want to call it? Solder on it, which can cause problems. But also it just gets like this buildup of crusty flux because um, it basically burns a little bit of the flux every time you put that, put it on there. And that can just cause, uh, you know, just glooping and ironing glitches and problems. So pardon me while I get a weird angle to solder this on here. As for the process I use to clean my iron, I use the brass sponge technique. I just got a little brass sponge doodle over there in my iron holder. And it just wicks the junk right off the solder and leaves you super clean. And the upside is you don't have to, uh, it's not like a real sponge, you don't have to wet it. They are a disposable item. So that's why I got 20 of them in a drawer down there. I have enough to last me for the next several years. It's one of the things that I suggest if you're going to be doing uh, soldering frequently enough that you need to have supplies um, more than just the occasional thing is I suggest getting extras. Always get extras of everything. That way, when you're in a specific situation and you get stuck because something breaks or whatever, you got a spare, and then you just immediately go online or wherever your favorite retailer is and just order the replacement part. And then you don't have to ever worry about it. You always got stuff. The weather today here in Ohio. Let's talk about the weather because I need to fill space. Now, the, uh, seriously, I'm thinking about it because I'm hot right now. The weather here in Ohio was quite toasty today. And of course, that means I had to do all the yard work. And of course, because I haven't done any significant outdoor work or anything uh, for, you know, six months, I uh, nearly, uh, nearly collapsed. I'm kidding. I didn't actually. Uh, but I, uh, I found out how terribly and woefully out of shape I am. And of course, the house is right on the cusp of like needing to have the air conditioning on, but not quite. So it's just a little warm inside. Just a little bit. Having these gloves on doesn't really help, but whatever. One soldered PDS connector. Did not take that long at all. Okay. Who is talking? Sponge doodle, yes. A bar named the Krusty Fluxes. Scrolling back. Yep, yep, not suggesting you don't. Just, yep, oops, press too fast. You just wouldn't yourself. That's fine, that's fine, Bruce. Um, <laughs> Joe is thorough. I am lazy. <laughs> I think you have that phrase backwards, Bruce, but that's okay. I watch your stream, sir. Except last night's because we were doing our own little stream. I uh, we were just doing our thing. So yeah. Um, switch for wet. Yeah, from wet to sponge, and it's yeah, it's a completely different thing. I find myself doing soldering under the microscope even when I don't really need to. Me too. Even when I'm like doing the the large joints on the blue scuzzies here. Um, which you'll notice if anybody can notice the error with this blue scuzzy, leave it in the chat. Um, but even when I'm doing the big joints, I just, I do it under the scope because it's easier. Um, yes. Why do I find a soldering live stream at 1.30 a.m.? I'm sorry, Francois, because I'm in the United States and you're in, I presume, France. Very nice in Cali today. Yes, Garth. I kind of wish I was in Cali. You specifically live in a very, like, nice kind of wooded, um, like, mountainous area. So, yeah. Hi, Michael's Workshop.
Understood. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is this a standard SE? Yes, it is. VHS. This is the SE Reloaded board. This is the Revision 2, uh, which it's based off of. This original here is also the Revision 2, apparently, because it doesn't have the, the resistor clip a doodle you have to do down here to change the memory size. Excuse me. Um, so what's next? Let's go through the box and find what parts I have next to put in. What are these parts? These are EMI filter circuits. I think they go up here. Let's find out. I have the parts list open in another tab. Um, control F filter. Where do these go? Well, we don't want to put those in yet. We want to populate all the small stuff first. We don't want to put the chips in yet. No chips yet. No chips yet. Um, did I create an actual master list from this? Like an Excel format that had it all based on like the number of components to order? I swear I did. Huh. Okay, well, we're just going to, like, print this. Uh, can I download just the file? Go to file. Bill of materials. Great. Like, I want just the file. I am not a GitHub user, so I'm, like, trying to figure out how to download just the file, and I can't do it because I'm a stupid like, I guess I could just copy and paste it, but it's going to copy all that formatting crap. That's fine. We'll just do it. Windows R, Notepad, sure. Cool. File, print. Print to, uh, print to that printer. Stand by. You know, I could have been prepared, but, like, what's, what's the fun in doing that? Freedom fries, yes. Uh, all I will say about France today is congratulations. I think you guys got good news today. I do have a genuine question for you, Joe. Any reason why you soldered all the big things first rather than doing all those little axial components? Uh, yes, because when I started this project, I had all the big things, but not the axial components. And I was bored, and it was a weekend a couple months ago, and I decided I was just going to do it. Um, Normally, I would solder the small components first, the small axials and radials and stuff like that. And uh, usually the idea is you go from whatever's not as tall on the board up to the taller components because in th the theory is, is that when you lay the board flat with all the, all the components of the, of the same height level, the gravity of the board just holds them all in place. But I use the uh, the pin bending technique where I flay the pins out like that, but not like all the way over, just enough to, so it keeps it in there. And I don't, so I don't really worry about it. Um, what news about France did I miss? Uh, yeah, Francois, not, it's not so much good as less bad. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, I'll say VHS is France had an election today and it could have been, uh, pretty bad. Um, quick news of, well, yeah. Um, can I axial a question, Michael? You're funny. Um, so let's grab this parts list because we're going to start stuffing parts. Parts stuffing. 100 nanos. Here's the question. Did I buy 100 nanos specifically for this project or not? I don't know. There's not a huge bag in here, so I'm thinking I didn't. That's fine. Well, I had to because they're axials. There's the mono jack. There's the crystal. This is dual line drivers, resistors, transceivers, resistors. Ah, there they are. There's our axial cap. Capsers. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Start with 100 nanofarad capsers. We'll do it. Let's do it. Want to see a cool trick for removing a whole bunch of capacitors at once? Have these big chunky shears from a billion years ago that I use specifically for this purpose. Well, and other like heavy duty pur purposes, porpoises. Ha ha ha! Anyway, itchy, itchy behind the ear for some reason. Stop it. Okay, there we go. I lost a capacitor across the floor. You can also do this trick where you kind of pull them out, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. There we go. I did lose one capacitor on the floor, and I probably ordered spares. Uh, because that's what I do. So we will see if I actually need that one that fell on the floor or not. We will find out. Won't we? So. Okay. In your head cannon, did you imagine the Mouser employee? For okay, yeah, that, yeah, uh huh. Yeah, can we just like put that up there? <laughs> Sure, why not? If it makes you feel better. Never use those shears uh, while cutting here. Don't touch yourself while wearing the gloves. Yeah, I know. It's safe if you lick the gloves clean before you do, trust me. Now we know, Dana, why you have such an interesting proclivity for, um, how can we say, disorder. What is a head cannon and where can I buy one? <laughs> okay. Capacitor. We'll just kind of dump these all out real quick. We don't really need this board sitting there at the moment. We'll just kind of put it to the side. Give me a little more room to work. Come out of here, capacitors. Cool. Got a pile of capacitors on the bench. And now we need the little foldy tool to just happen to have a reader. This is a lead forming tool. It's a little 3D printed jig. And so you can place this over the place where the, uh, where the components are supposed to go, for example. And then you figure out the size you want, and then you can just fold all the components and have them all folded correctly. So we're going to figure this out. It's probably the white spacing. It almost always is. That's why I have it marked in white, um, because it's the one that is almost always used. So you just lead form. That way you don't have to guess. Just it's formed properly. And then we pop it in here and we take a look. And that is a little too wide. That is quite a bit too wide. So it's looking I need like I need the minimum lead form space. Which is this one all the way up here at the top. You can do it, hands. are. Oh, come here. Let's see. Is that minimum spacing the correct spacing? It is. Cool. So that one is done. And we're going to mark these off as I go. Where is my magical pen? Where did my pen go? Hello, pen. Hello, pen. I don't know. We'll get a second one. Oh, the first one is up there. I found my pen. So C1 is done. C2. This is the world's, world's most boring thing. You're just going to watch me stuff components into a board. 
if you guys have any weird questions about weird or normal questions, whatever, questions about anything computery or technical, drop them in the chat. I may have answers. I may not. I may have all the answers and just decide not to answer you. Or I may decide to answer you more than once because I roll that way because I'm weird. C3. should probably just fold these all at the same time. Here. Aha. Magical holy bin. There we go. What is the meaning of life, MacFX? Good question. Oh my gosh, MacFX dropped me a super sticker. Woo! Thank you for the super sticker, MacFX. What is the meaning of life? I don't know, but I know the answer to the meaning of life, the universe, and everything is 42. Um, one always finds their pen after taking another one out of the box. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, doodle. Since we have the wonderful uh, Mac effects in the chat, let's uh, talk about his newest uh, Kickstarter doodle, which is the Kickstarter for the Apple IIc keyboard replacement. Uh, I helped design that keyboard replacement, so I'm very happy to be part of that project with them. Uh, we, I mentioned it a couple times, but I'll mention it again. The design is, we'll, we'll say final, it is ready for deployment. However, since we are in a holding pattern to do lots of different manufacturing things, especially since like the, the main place in China where all this stuff is manufactured is uh, shut down by the Chinese government because they don't know how to give their, uh, their citizens vaccines instead of just like telling them to, to uh, shelter in place and hope that that works. Uh, since we have a lot of time on our hands, we decided to go ahead and spin a, an update to the keyboard. I will just put it that way. This update to the keyboard adds a whole bunch of super secret features to this keyboard which is going to make the keyboard even that much cooler. It is going to be phenomenally awesome. So, I had in order to design that, I had to order some parts from my PCB manufacturer. Um, and then we are also collaborating with Plum, Plum and Voiceloff of A2 Heaven um, to add some of these features in there because it requires some microcontroller programming, and he is a hundred times better than me at microcontroller programming, so he's going to be doing that magic. And once we get those parts in, then I can ask Plum, and hey, you, you want to give me that code, buddy? And he'll shoot the code over to me, and I will build a test jig to make sure it functions as we need it to, because the test jig is a tiny little emulation of a keyboard. It's not a full keyboard. It'll allow me to test the functions. Um, and then if we test those functions and they work, then we can produce the real final version. And people are going to have a really super awesome surprise. It's going to be really super nifty. And Javier for 2C Love. Yes, Javier is going to be involved in that project too. Um, Javier is producing um, a lot of the art for that project. Please consider myself hired for that computer work. No problem, VHS. Just send it to me. I believe you have my address. If you do not, shoot me an email to remind me, and I'll get it to you. That'll be a let's see what we can figure out kind of a project there. iMac G517, how to boot from CD. Hold down the C key while turning it on. Some newer keyboards don't work with boot keys. Oh, nice. I know, I'm just catching up with comments and I'm behind and you've already all answered my questions. Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech is here. Hey, Dave. If y'all didn't know Dave and uh, probably several of the people in the chat, uh, we were all on a little, little live stream last night on Ron's channel. We were playing video games. We've kind of gotten into this Macintosh Video Gamers Club, even though we're not really playing on too much on Macs yet, um, where we just play whatever games we want. 
Ron decided to give me a break the last couple times we played because I get motion sickness playing 3D games. And so I guess he was being super nice to me. And for that, I am thankful. But pretty short little streams. I can I can take one for the team and, and play some 3D games. We played uh, last couple times we played uh, we played Marathon uh, on both Mac and PC, whatever we had available. Then we played um, was it Marathon 2, I don't remember. Then we played some Halo. That was fun. There was one game in there that the guys played that guys and gals, I should say, played that I was not available for, so I couldn't join them. I don't remember which game that was. might have been Doom or something. And then the last couple times we played a, played a couple rounds of Jackbox. I did okay. Until I didn't. <laughs> so that's a thing. You guys can't see what I'm doing here. I'm not quite on the right screen. I'm just, I'm just sitting here uh, folding... Folding capacitors, just like it's like asthma uh, board building uh, stuff. This is the most boring part of this. A retro streamer frag fest. Yes, yes. Uh, cat, reach out to me via some other media. Like I don't know, be um, DM me on Twitter or something. Um. At, Je at Museum Joe. It's up here above my head. Um, and we'll see if we can get you in on that group. There's a lot of Apple II folks in that group. Uh, Javier has been in the group a couple times. Ron from Ron's Computer Videos is in that group. we got a lot of Mac people in there too. So, yeah. You would love to play Warcraft 2 online. Same thing. Same thing, Mr. Mac Effects. Shoot me Shoot me a PM, DM thing or whatever, and I'll have Ron reach out to you about invites and stuff. We have our own little kind of like Discord server where we discuss what we're going to play and stuff like that. I have you in my list, yes. Who, who else in the chat was there last night? We got Dave was there. We had Justin was there. Uh, Garth was there. Eric, were you there last night? I don't remember. We had you on the previous one. Works better when you type on the correct keyboard. Eric, every time, every freaking time. Do you have any idea how many times back here I've worked on this? I was working on this Apple III or something, testing something, and I was typing. Well, it's not there now, but I had an Apple II on a little frame above it, and I was typing on the Apple II keyboard like a frigging moron. VHS was there. Yes, VHS, you were there. Thank you. Alex was there um, from Alex's uh, retro... I don't remember Alex's channel name. Exodium was there from Exodium's retro house. Lots of cool people. Neither Eric was there last night. Yes. I just, my, I don't like, I don't remember things. I'm the worst rememberer ever. Like, I don't, I don't have true memory. I don't have, like memory loss problems or memory retention problems. I have memory recall problems. I always have for a billion years. A billion years. I didn't do well in school because of it. That and the ADHD. Um, at work, I when I started. Uh, working a professional job, I had to actually, I've created all these. Yeah, Alex is Retro Shack. Thank you, Justin. Um, see you, Mike. Have fun. Kate and Mackie were there, too. Yes, Kate and Mackie were there. Oh, Mackie! Mackie was there! So, you all know Mackie from the from the uh, the wonderful Macintosh SE uh, sidekick from, uh, from Kate Fox's uh, channel, the Macintosh Librarian. Mackie was there, live. We had a live Mackie. A live Mackie playing the games with us. It was friggin' awesome. It was the best thing ever. Mackie is life. Yes, it was fun times. I apologize for on that stream. I was a little despondent today, and I was a little tired. Um, but that happens. I dropped a capacitor on the ground. I don't know where it is because my floor is it's patterned. It has a pattern to it. So things just are like static. They just disappear. 
it's carpet and I want to rip it up and replace it with like a, a like a like an enameled painted floor or something, but I'll get to that eventually. There it is. I found it. I found you. I found you. There it is. Continuing on. Yes, the opinion. That was super fun. Yes. Spicy Lego. <laughs> yes. Side raking the phone light finds them. Yes. So do your feet. But I digress. Steve, we missed you last night on the stream. I know you were busy with, with uh, VCF stuff, and that's cool. No worries there. But uh, in the last couple of streams, there have been many jokes at on on your uh, at your expense about your quadra. So yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, now we can actually put capacitators in here. Let's do it. Switch. Cool. So the next one is C three. C5, C6, 6, 7, and 8, yep, all of them in this corner. Oh, Dana, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can just imagine. Can only imagine your pain. I can actually kind of like turn to the side and watch the chat while I'm populating pins. Quadra 840 AV or not to be. <laughs> as far as the keys, why not have that as a separate kit and let, put them in the package with the rest of the parts? That is not a question for me. Six, seven, and eight, right? Yep. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Nine, nine, there's 10. Where is nine? Hello, nine. We can go ahead and do 10, because I found it. Where are you, nine? You're somewhere between eight and 10. Hello, nine. Over here, C9. Here it is. Here it is. Asthma board populating for your enjoyment. C9. We got C12. Eight, seventeen. Nine, ten. Where is twelve? Fifteen. See, fifth. There's fifteen. Seventeen, eighteen. Seventeen is. Do it. Do it. There you go. That was 17. Twenty. Twenty. 
20. 21. This might be easier to actually just pick up off the bench. We'll see. 21. Texas added, once the keyboard is assembled, I could make a jig, but frankly, I don't trust China to assemble the right keys after the fact. I found this the best way to ensure quality. Yes. 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 So, the, very interesting. Uh, I once had a, uh, a funny puncture a story like it wasn't funny. A puncture story like that. I jumped off of my bed once when I was about uh, thirteen or something like that. Um, it was a bunk bed, um, and I stepped on a Lego, and I'm like, "Oh, that'll be fine." And then it ended up getting infected. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, that was twenty one. Yep. I need to mark these as I go. Twenty two and twenty three. That one didn't want to go through correctly. That's what pliers are for, to coax it in the position. I have a feeling that that was not done correctly. Let's put it aside and do another one. 23, 23, 22, 23, 24, and 25 are both. I gotta find them. Put right down here. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty four and twenty five, twenty seven, twenty eight, and twenty nine. Twenty seven, twenty eight. Can do it. There you go. Cool. So 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. Thirty-three. Thirty-one. Thirty-nine. Where is thirty-three? Are there any in the back? No. C-33. Where are you, buddy? There's 39, 35. I'd figure it would be in this line here somewhere. All right, I can't find it, so we'll skip it. 35. That's right. Well, there's 33. I found it. <laughs> I need to read. 33, 35, hello, 35, you were down here. Nail, yes. 
And we'll wear steel toe boots if they ever work with eight inch floppy drives. Yes, I don't want to have to explain that one to the doctor. Hey, Rudy! Uh, yeah, Mac Effects, I had something hap similar happen, but it involved me falling down a flight of stairs. Yes. Uh, we are going to 39. Put it on and... This gets boring, folks. Just yell and let me know. And we can do something else. 41. 40. There's 43. 40. 42, 41. 41. 41 through 46. 41. Forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six. Can kind of give them all a little fold a doodle so they don't fall out. Yep. Next page, and now forty-seven through sixty-one. Okay. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. Fifty. Here's fifty one. Here's fifty. Fifty. Just doing a tiny little fold bend. On, on, on the leads. See, I cock them at a slight angle. Not too much of an angle. Just keeps them from falling out. That's it. 50. 51. Uh, my hands are in the way. That's not what you want to do. 51. 52. 52, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, wherever you there's 58, 57. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. You can do it, fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. All of those are the same value in order. 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61. Now we can just 
tweak those a little bit so they don't fall out. a little bit. Yep. 63. Now we have 63 through 66. Let's get some detritus on the end of it. 64. Sorry for not paying attention. I'm in the zone. 65. 66. I believe that would be all for the 100 nanos. Because I'm at the end of the board. And there are no more holes. Yep. 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 63, 64, 65, 66. There are no more capacitors. Those are all... Populated. And hey, look, I've got spares. Like I planned it or something. Oh, wait, I did. Always purchase spares. Is that the bag for those? It is. So we can put those in this bag. And those can go over the side because we don't need them anymore. What's chat talking about? Joe's in the zone, the retro computer zone. Yes. Anyone have replacement fans? I do not. Sorry, unless you were hauling hardware. Just sitting here on a Monday morning updating Mac ports while SSH'd into the 2SI because it's possible. That is awesome. That is super awesome. Are all these the same resistors? You're from not only quick at reading what you're picking up. They are all the same. Um, I am go I'm going through the master list here in order of, of, of component at a time. Basically, I'm picking a component from the bag, or from the box over here. Finding it in the list, and then just going ba -ba 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 -ba, and do them all at once. Yummy. Put all your spare caps towards a bigger parallel machine that will sub as a poor man's Tesla wall battery. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's put these on the board. Mass soldering shall commence. Hey, look, I found an extra cap. Told you. See, I'm a I I'm I'm a golden retriever. I saw that cap and was like, I gotta do something with it. Can't leave that on the bench. Also, I know myself really well. If I left that on the bench, I would never see it again. I would never notice it again. It would just get lost. Commence the soldering. Come on, extract, extract more fan. I need a faster fan. Unless I'm like right on top of it, you can see the smoke is going up towards my, well, maybe you can't, but I have to be like right up here for it to extract. I mean, I could flip it around and have it blow. Maybe that would work better. I don't know. This is also this little extraction fan is a testament to my cheapness. I had a spare knock to a DH15 or whatever it is fan. Super quiet fan. Um, oh, I didn't quite get that joint that good. Uh, that I just had spared. And I, and I because I had already spent the money on it, I'm like, I'm going to use this for something else. Um, and I'm like, oh, I need an extraction fan. And so instead of buying some expensive filtered blah, 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 blah I created this little 3D mesh for the front of it and on a 3d printer and just screwed it in place to it and it's done of course the mesh it's got i have a metal mesh like on the front of it uh just glued to the front of it so i can hit it with the iron and i'm not going to hit any plastic but it helps me prevent from getting stuff into the fan and breaking the blades
It's like I could get an official hacko filter, but like, eh, eh, money. I'm just like the world's cheapest person. I do not spend money unless I have to. Not that I'm like, I look for handouts or anything like that. Like, I spend money where it needs to be spent. But I find ways of doing things uh, that don't require dollars. It's just how I am. I don't know why. I've always been that way. I can't point to any one specific, like, formative childhood something or other that I could say was the cause or source of that. I'm just... Why spend money when you don't have to spend money? That said, I can say that I have very confidently overspent on many of the retro computers I have because I don't have I, what something that I uh, also don't have a lot of is time. And so if I see something and it looks good and it's overpriced, as long as it's not insanely gargantuanly overpriced, I'll be like, okay because it's in really good condition, for example. So if I get something that is, like, just stellarly awesome with, like, all of the kit and caboodle with it, and the parts and doodads, and it's, like, mint condition, whatever, I'm willing to pay a little extra money so I don't have to spend time repairing the thing. It just works, right? That's just how I am. Get out of my face, fumes. What are people saying? Tandy DT100, why is Y50? I have one, but I didn't get a keyboard. I'd like to adapt some sort of keyboard to it. Very good question. Um, I don't know anything all about that. Yep, don't know. Um, not to a fan. Makes a fan that would fit my LC2. Uh, I can say that it does. I, I have um, a, uh, a not to a fan of my LC2. Um, not to a makes a fan that is the right outside dimension. But the top, the, the like the box dimension is correct, but the thickness is too thick. So in my case, it just kind of lays in there, and it'll lay in there just fine. It won't rattle around or fall out or anything, but it, the clips won't hold it in. The case holds it down. So, Rudy's Retro Intel, where can we buy this Mac SE board? That is a really good question. I do not know exactly, as a, a wonderful benefactor in the stream gave me this board. So I didn't buy it. It, it just appeared um, uh, as, a, uh, as a thank you uh, present type of thing. Um, let's see, Mac SE reloaded board. Now you can just go to Kai Robinson's... Um, you can go to Kai Robinson's uh, GitHub on it and just download the Gerbers and get one made. For those of us who are in the hobby and know about making PCBs, you can just download the Gerber and send it to PCB Way or JLC PCB or Osh Park or whoever you like. I personally like JLC PCB because their pricing and service and speed are the best, but whatever. And you can just get them made. You can get a board made. You don't have to buy it from anybody specifically. It's it's free to the community, so to speak. Um, but yeah. You can also, uh, if you do want to buy one ready-made and ready to go, however, the person who gave me this board is in the chat. And he gave me one. And you can go to Mac Effects website and buy one. So if you don't, if you're not in, not in the game, so to speak, and you don't know how to have boards built, or all that, you can just go and buy the bare board, and then you go over to Kai's website, or to Kai's GitHub, and you download this parts list, and you get the parts, and you just stuff the board full of parts. Uh, every part in this is available aftermarket with the exception of like two or three parts. Uh, one being the BBU chip, which is a custom chip, um, which is kind of hard to come by, but if you get a battery bombed board, this is like the best way to get a battery bombed board well, I'm showing you here. It's like, take a battery bond board and put all the parts on the battery bond that work on this, replace the ones that you can just replace, and then you de-battery bond the board. That's the point, right? So a couple of parts, you, there are also a couple of parts that you can just get from eBay because they're still available there, but some of them are just not manufactured anymore. 
anymore. So once those disappear, they disappear. So anyway, moving on. Um, I still got a few more of these to solder in. I was just taking a little chat break. I may put you guys on hold for a minute and get to go upstairs and get another another delicious yummy diet Pepsi. Not sponsored. I just happen to like them because I'm a little parched. So I was saying earlier, it is warm in the house, and I did outside work today, and it utterly destroyed me. So I'm kind of in autopilot mode. Joe requires thirst quench mode. Man, I would love to be able to have a beer right now, but I can't drink alcohol, so that kind of sucks, but whatever. Like, I, I'll have a glass of wine or a beer on a very special occasion, but I'm really not allowed to do that. I take a medication for my anxiety that has negative effects in combination with alcohol. So, yeah. Just not supposed to. Solder all the pins. Solder the pins. Cool. I'm going to do a quick scan down the board and make sure I didn't miss any. I don't think so. They're not rattling. Good. That's a cool trick. I don't know if you ever knew that. To check to see if you've got any, uh, any uh, loose components, you can just do a little rattle. You'll hear them go rattle in the in the sockets. Clip all the things. And I'm going to use my nice my nice snips for this. Much better. day long. Clip, clip, clip while I sing this song. Adam Sandler's gonna copyright strike me. Now, I do use several tools for my work here. I've got a lot of them. And if you are curious which tools I use, you can go to my website and look that up. It's jcm-1.com slash tools. Oh, I missed one. I missed one. See, sometimes the rattle trick doesn't always work. That's jcm-1.com slash tools. And there are a bunch of affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links. And if you go on there and you purchase any of the tools from those links, it will charge you nothing at all, no dollars at all. But it will... Give me a little bit, a couple dollars, a little kid, a bit, a couple cents here and there to, again, to help me fund my little awesome hobby that I do. For everybody who's still or who has come in later, again, thank you for stopping by and watching. Remember to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell. Those things tell the YouTube algorithm. Hi, YouTube. Are you listening? Uh, that you like my content and it will show content. It'll show my content to people who watch content that you also watch is basically how that works. Because it figures if, if, if you're watching my stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff and other people are watching very similar things to you, that you would have similar interests and maybe you'd like to watch my stuff. So that's what it does. Oh, missed another one. No biggie. And then that allows more people to come and see my content, which allows me to share my 8-bit, or in this case, 16-bit love with more people. Ah, I missed another one.
Missed another one. done what's next picking random thing out of the box what are these those are that's the adb connector sure we'll do that that's what i grabbed we're gonna put it in there uh knife knife hello knife where did knife go it's on bench i know knife on bench i used a knife just 20 minutes ago half hour ago hour ago whenever the heck it was All right. Scissors. Oh, I just found the knife. The moment I'm like, scissors, I'm like, here's the knife right there. I try to keep, as you can see, I'm failing to. I try to keep all my tools to my right over here in this one little pile. So I don't have, I'm not searching all over the, uh, all over the bench for tools. Tools go right here. I'm right-handed, so that makes sense that they would go. ADB ports. Also known as S video ports. I'm running low on solder. I need to get more solder. Go together, go together with my soldering iron. Here comes old SE motherboard, comes grooving up, broken, and we depopulate it and put it in a reloaded. And now the Beatles will get me. Okay. ADB ports are connected. Ooh. JLC PCB is the best, in my opinion. I agree. Is the BBW chip hard to find? The um, uh, yes, this one right here. That one. Um, yes, the BBU. Um, it's like super custom. Um. I, know, I haven't tried to look for them because I've had boards that I could steal them off of, so it hasn't been a big deal for me. But I would presume that those would be kind of difficult to find. Oh, Michael's Workshop. Will you do a Yellowstone review? You mean for that right there that I have? That is in the plan in the works, although it might end up being after May because I'm doing May Pro stuff in May, so we'll see. I've only started looking at the egrets, so don't talk to me about the B BBU. Hey, the egrets are still kind of available. The upside is the egret has also been reverse engineered. So, and it's basically just a, I believe it's either, it's like a pick or an Atmel. It's just a little microcontroller um, that has like a 6502 in or so, it's some sort of little, basically microcontroller. So in theory, those could be replaced by a little like weird clip on board thing. So that's not a big thing. When was the last time you used Radio Shack branded solder? That is a very good question. Um, I do not remember. It has been a quite a long time ago, probably at least two decades ago, but I do still have some. Um, will you sell tools that you have signed? No. <laughs> like, if you really want to pay me extra to sign a tool, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still using a large spool of solder that I had from 1987. Yes. 
the 68 HCO5. Yeah, it's which is basically like a 6502. It's a yeah. So yeah. Cool. What's next? Um, we're just going to put our hands in here and find out what's next in the list. These two tiny components, 10 picofarads. Now I've got to go through this entire list and find out where they are. 10 puffs. C19, which is going to be up in here somewhere. Well, I have two. That doesn't mean... There are two in the board. That just means I have two. Like I said, I tend when I uh, purchased uh, items for projects, I tend to always get a couple extra in case things happen like happened earlier where I dropped them on the floor. C19. So right here. So that's in the board. What else? Make sure there are no other tens. No other tens. This is a spare. Uh, 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 where did I put the little baggie? There it is. That goes in the baggie and goes to the side. Who's next? These. Uh, no, I want to do capacitors. That's a resistor. That's resistor. Resistor. Uh, chokes. Resistors. Resistors. Big caps. Diodes. Resistors. Capacitors. Connected doodles. Hey, look! A CPU! Yes, I was able to buy a new CPU for this. Can you imagine that? Craziness. Absolutely crazy. And those are uh, resistors, socket, uh, not capacitors, capacitors. That's a chip of some description. Uh, resistors, I know those are all resistors. Chips, 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 chips. Yep, okay. So these are all the caps that are left. Okay, cool. So now we have 33 oofs. 33 oofs. That's a one oof. That's a 68 puff. These are 33 oofs. Now, you're going to all yell at me because these are radial. not axial. And the reason I got radials is because axials are not available. You can't get them right now. It's impossible. Impossible. Double, double, double. It's not a thing you can do. So I'm going to have to just deal with it. Okay? You're going to have to deal with that being the way it is. But you can't, it'll stress the leads! <laughs> Hush. It'll be fine. It'll be just fine. Now, you may not notice this, but I am pulling on the leads, not the body. I'm holding it down here and pulling on the leads. Why? You don't want to pull on the body when you pull these capacitors out of here, because that will put stress on the internal con con contacts inside the capacitor and give you problems. Not, not a thing you wish to do. Now, I agree with you. Normally, I would put proper axials in here, but I can't get them. Can't. I tried really hard.
Joe will sign your soldering iron for $100 plus shipping. That's funny, Justin. What processor is going into the Retro Mac? It is a Toshiba copy of the 68000. Yes. You generally snip the leads off the tape anyway. Yes. Um, however, because, because these... Uh, I have to like do wacky things with the leads. I wanted as much extra lead length as possible. That's why I actually pulled them out. Um, normally, yeah, you can just cut them off like I did with the those capacitors in bulk, um, the ones I've already put in. Um, but in this case, I want the leads as long as possible to give me enough room to do what I need to do to get them in, in, in place, basically. Cool, so let's do that. C4, boom, ha ha, joke. Uh, it goes up here. So we're going to fold those over like this. Again, holding the lead when I bend it instead of bending it uh, from the base so that we don't put stress on the base. And then I can figure out what the spacing is supposed to be using my spacing tool and then lead form it with the lead forming spacing tool. That way that they're perfect, basically. So that spacing is something like this one here. I believe it's this one. We will find out real quick. Like this. Is that the correct spacing? That's good. Cool. I'm also putting that in there backwards, but, you know, I'll fix that. Right here. Whoop. There you are, and it's in there. Like champ. Cool. C4. C11, which is here. Wonky leads. So which one was that again? I just need to double check. It was this one. So this one here. I can mark that with a little colored pen. Just need to put a little mark on it. That way I know which one it is. Go back there. Now we need to let that dry because reasons. Can I do this one by eye? Let's find out. Ha! I did that one by eye perfectly. Now I know what is required to do those by eye. Great. So this will go a little bit faster. So there. The little kink that's already in these is where it bends at for this particular spacing. So that's C11, that's done. I found C12, it's right there. Might as well put that in there while I'm at it. That is these. Mm -hmm. C12. 
Cool. Cool. Who's next? C13 over here. Here. 11, 12, 13, right here. C thirteen. Chat works better without the Lido drivers. Yes, Lido is bad. Don't use Lido based drivers on your blue scuzzies or on anything. Lido drivers are crap. Is it fixed yet? No. Uh, I just did C13. Now we do 16, which is here. C16. I didn't bend that one over quite enough. There we go. C16. C16 is done. C26. 26. Here. Come on, eyeballs, work. Focus. There we are. There we are. C26. C32, 32, 34, 38, more. Get off there, fuzz. No fuzz. There we go. The upside to these capacitors, they match the board. They're red. Red, yay! Come off of there, tape goo. No tape goo. Cool. Fold a doodle and get these in here. Uh, oh. And this one. And this one. Checking the polarity as I go. 
to make sure that I'm putting them in correctly because these are these are electrolytic capacitors which have a polarization to them. Oh, those are dope. So we've got 32, 34, 37, and 38. I believe that is all of those. It is. And we put the spares in here, and we put them to the side so we know that we've done them. Uh, I put those into the wrong bag entirely. Let's do that again, shall we? Those go in, not that bag. I don't know which freaking bag. One of these bags, not that one. Not that one. Here, you're just going to go over there. Just go over there out of my way. You're fine. You're fine. Now these, I, were able to, I was able to get in Axials. These are the 1UF capacitors, which go right, there's only one of them, it goes right here. Memory serves as part of the sound circuit. So the negative is pointing this direction. Yep. So we want this lead approximately there. And this lead approximately there. That is an utter guess. We're going to find out how good I was. I got it. Perfect. Cool. Cool beans. So we are done with those. Cool. So that would be this one right here. The one you have. I'm going to go ahead and solder these in right now because the leads are bothering me and I want the leads out of the way to not bother me anymore. Um, got just random leads sticking there. Solder them up. Get out of my fist. Solder, solder, solder. Pins, pins, pins for days. Do all the pins. Because Frylock Baby's got to have it. There's your Aqua Teen Hunger Force reference for the evening. There was a gosh dang freezer. I got freezer burned and I got mushed up against that chicken. Cool. All right. Snip a doodle. Snip in leads. Capacitators. Bruce, equivalent series resistance. If he's still in the chat. Little shout out to Bruce. I'll be checking chat in just a second. Hold on. I know I haven't checked it in like 10 minutes. Because I'm a bad host. Bad. Someone clipped that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, PCB shortages. So would a PCB revision to accept a radial capacitor be practical for a future run? Maybe. 
I was asking what speed CPU you were putting in it. The speed CPU I'm putting in it is whatever it is. I don't know. I do not remember what speed this thing takes. That's a 16, I believe. 16 megahertz. Yeah, depending on the traces in the way, correct. That is correct, Francois. Is it fixed yet? No. Uh, looking, looking, looking. Lido is a cabaret in France. <laughs> yes, yeah, SCSI Director Pro is an awesome application. If you need to do anything with your SCSI devices and your classic 68K Max, use that. Did I find a CPU socket? No, I'm going to use pins. I don't know what you're talking about, Rocky, but okay. Rocky Hill. Interesting name. You don't happen to actually be uh, Stephen Wozniak, are you? Hi, Charlie. Oh, that, hey, that's cute there, Aladdin. It's about to be magic flying dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't eat copper, Daddy. Of course you can. You just got to boil it until the glue gets soft. You put on your work boots and your respirator. Axial cap's going the way of the dodo. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, the radials work. You just got to deal with it. It's just a thing you got to deal with. You, you just put the caps in here upright like they are, just kind of sticking out. And then you put a tiny little, um, I'm about ready to give Steve some crazy like uh, flashbacks. You put a tiny, tiny little daub of hot glue at the base of each one to keep them from wiggling. And then you're fine. It's no, no big deal. It's easy peasy. Um, what comes next? I have these. These are 68 puffs. 68 puffs, which are C40. Where is C40? It's somewhere down in this general vicinity. 67. C40. It's right there. It's right there next to the cereal chip. I believe there's only one of these. C4. 68 puff. Or 68 pico farads. So that one's done. 68 puff. Puff the magic passator. Its real name was Rifa. Uh, 62, 33 UF 16 volt. I got 62. Ah, I missed one down here. Oops. Oops, doodles. That's fine. Oh, here we go. Fold, fold, and oops, I, I screwed that connector up. That's nice. We'll just, I'll learn to deal with it. I have a pair of pliers that are completely flat, which is good for fixing problems like this. Go. Perfect. Perfecto. Uh, there we go. How many are watching? We've got 19 people watching me. That's awesome. Um, this is C18. Um, we're not doing that one yet. We did the, you know, we did the 68. We did this one down here. Yes. Cool. So now we've got one last capacitor to put in. One tiny little 33 puff at C18, which is somewhere in this general vicinity here. Uh, I just got to find it. And I also have to find the capacitor because I don't know where it is. 
It's right there. <clears throat> I don't know where that capacitor is as I grab the bag. Also, packaging from Mauser, inconsistent. Like, it's always good. Their packaging is always great, but like sometimes you'll get little capacitors like 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 this that are like wrapped up in a little little like bags, and other times they're just like it's just thrown in the baggie. It's like whatever, whatever. Did I throw that bag away? I didn't want to throw that bag away, did I? Yep, I didn't want to throw the bag away because it holds the capacitors. I found the one for the 33s. And then this one is right here. That's for the 33s. Then what's this? Well, that's for the 33 pot. That's for those. What am I doing? What even am I doing? This is the 33 mic. And these are the 33 puffs. Yeah, there we go. This one, again, C18. I found it, and I've lost it again. It's up in here somewhere. C18, right there. Right under the filter. Okay. Right under the filter. Right here. You can do it. There we go. So we got C18. Uh-huh. Cool. I believe we have all the C's done. Cool. Ugh. Adjust chair. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of a headache, and it's because I'm crouched over this bench. And it pinches a nerve in my neck. I mean, it gives me a headache. It's a thing that happens, but we deal. We deal with it. So oh, all the capacitors are done, correct? That entire page is complete. Don't need that anymore. This entire top half of the page is complete, so I'm just going to cut it off so it can't bother me anymore. None of my trash is staying in the trash can. Absolutely none of it. The trash can must need to be emptied. Okay, where are we? What are people talking about? One of my favorite episodes. Yeah, those early the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, like season two to season like four, are just gold. That red board looks pretty. Yes. Joe needs Pepsi stat. 3 a.m. Must sleep. See ya, Francois. Have a good night. Mount chat monitor on ceiling so you have to look up every once in a while. But that'll just cause like neck pain the other way. I'll just be like, ah. Looking for a mod to make a 2E power supply work on 220 volts AC. Yes. Uh, interesting that you, it's interesting you say that, uh, Rudy. A lot of the Apple II power supplies actually just have an internal jumper where if you just move the jumper, it'll go from 120 to 240 support. Just internally, just you're just moving. Uh, you're you're just changing the the um, the primary winding of the input, uh, uh, whatever it's called, thingamabobble. What is that doodle? Transformer. Transformers more than meets the eye. <laughs> I might name my next boar's hand banana. <laughs> You, me, tonight. Hand up in hand. Jesus Christ. Anyway, moving on. Um, we have CRs. Uh, CRs are diodes. Um, so the CR, uh, uh, the CR designation here, which is washed out and you can't read. The CR designation. 
uh, literally means current rectifier, um, but it's a diode. Uh, so let's find those diodes. Those are all chips, chips and chips and chips. Not those, not those. Uh, general purpose power switching diodes. There are the diodes. These days, you usually use D for diode. But you can use CR. That's fine. You. So we need how many of these? Three. I only need three of the five. So we take these two and we put them back in the bag and we put the bag to the side. Ah, running into my spare pen. So, where do these guys go? One, two, and three. Um, they Here's one. Here's two and three right there. Cool. Lead former. We put the black line where the line is in the on the layout here. Those have a slightly different uh, layout, slightly different size. Interesting. Okay, that's a thing. Well, that one's just going to be catting all this for a bit because these need to be wider. I don't know why. That's just how the layout is of this board. A little bit extra bleed space. A little bit extra lead space. All right. Um, so there's that one. Here are the other two. CR2 and CR3. Make sure again making sure the black line on the actual diode matches where the line is on the layout on the board so that they're in the same orientation. So those are done. Yes. Now we've got the serial jacks already. We already did those. And we did the ADB jacks already as well. So those are done. Um, we have, uh, the external SCSI is done, the internal SCSI is done, the external floppy is drive, the upper and lower drives are done. Those are all done. I haven't done the earphone jack yet, but we'll get to that. Speaker main PDS, blah, 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 blah. Those are all sockets. Okay. Uh, we have L's. L for loop. Um, L's are, uh, inductors, basically. A coil of wire. Um, so that is resistors, resistors, resistors. How much you want to bet I didn't actually get any, uh, I forgot to order the um, inductors. Resistors, that'd be funny. Those are common mode chunks. Resistors. That's a chip of some description. Chips. Resistor networks. Resistors. Resistors. That's the crystal, or one of the crystals. That's this audio jack. Cutters and decoders. I'm missing parts. Oh, no. I'll figure it out. We'll roll with it. 16 micro Henry. So these are, wait, these are six or 24 to 16. Yeah, these are actually filters. Yeah. That's the ADB filter. Okay. So apparently I don't have any of 
the chokes. Well, poopy. Let me double check. Maybe I just had them in stock. Uh, inductors, 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 inductors. Uh, these are 27s. So I have a 27. That's a thing. So at least have one of them. The other ones, I don't know why I don't have them. I'm not sure. They might be the big chonkers that I'll have to steal from the other board. I think that's what it was. I think I'll have to steal this from the other board. We will find out. Film at 11. <clears throat> um, so that's this. So that's L1. Where is L1? L1 is right here. Yeah, that's L2 and L3. That's these two, which are those big chonkers, which I'm just going to steal from the other board. Aha. Now I know why I didn't order. Aha. Crisis of Earth. So I need my other board because we're going to take those out of this board. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Piece cake. Zoom zoom machine. Um. I was having problems finding these, and that's why I decided to just steal them out of this board. Not missing a pen or something. No, no, no. They're just being kind of dumb, kind of belligerent. I have to be kind of ginger with them too, because they're just wires on a on a ferrite bead so really doesn't want to come out to the microscope scope view Doink. scope cam let's take a look Oh, drench is not clear. That would explain that, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. It sure would. It sure would. So we're going to add some solder to it so we can get a good mixture so then we can take solder out of it. Ah, it fell right out. Look at that. Cool. I don't have to do anything. It did it itself. Yay. Let's look at the other one. Uh... The other one looks clear. It should just come right out. Bench cam. So these go in. I don't think the orientation really matters, but it goes in that way. There we go. And they're out. And then these go in here. Ha! Huh, it took the entire via out with it. Nice. Back to scope cam. Because we're gonna have to get that we're gonna have to get that via off there. Took the entire grommet rivet out. There we go. Cool. Back to bench. 
Let's try that again. There we are. That one's in. We'll just use blue tack to hold that in while I flip the board over because these don't really have leads that I can fold over. And this has the same problem as well. It took the rivet out with it. I think that's the rivet. I'm not quite sure. It might be the rivet or it might just be a lot of extra solder. Oh, it's just a lot of extra solder. Okay. I do have to wake that off of there, or it's not going to work with me. Fiddly bit. Ow. Hot. Cool. Got it. There we are. Cool. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Badge cam. So those are back in, and we're going to put a little bit of blue tack in between them. Just kind of shove it in place, so when I flip this over, it'll stay in place to solder the pins. Cool. Now we can solder doodle. Let me arrange some stuff there. There we go. Tools go to the right. Okay. Put these all in. Solder all the things. Uh -huh. So those are all done. Cut the leads. Oops. Are all in. Awesome. 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 Uh, this does need a little bit of adjustment, however. There we go. There we are. They're flush with the board now. Inductors are in place. What's next? What is next on the list? Joe's about ready to go upstairs and grab a drink. Got those. Now, technically, L4, there's the L4 ferrite bead. I don't believe I was able to find that at all. Um, I'm not sure what that value is supposed to be or what the purpose of it is. It might end up just being a wire link. <clears throat> and the only prescription is more tiny comp. Where can we order them? Ooh, ooh, I'll tell you where you can order them. I'll show you, because you can order them on jcm-1.com. I go here, and I go to Tiny Comp, and I go to Category, and I go Control-C, and I go Control-V, and boom! Boom! There's where you can get your Tiny Comps, right there. Ooh, thanks, Justin, for popping the link in there for me, too. Yes. Untrailable ports like caps or lower values. Not sure what you need for 240, maybe 400. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Yep. Uh huh. Thomas Armstrong, much better answer to that than me. I have CRT and LCD with composite. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to put you on pause for just a minute. I'm going to see if I actually have pause music. or a background, or something I can put you to say, hey, we're on pause. 
Um, yes, I can. I have this right here. I'm going to put you on pause for a minute. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah, that ferrite bead. I may just steal that ferrite bead off the other board. Um, yeah, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Hold on. And I'm back. Yeah, I didn't have any music there. It was just a static image. I don't have, I have like, I have my OBS set up to stream with music. With, like when that, when you saw that, I was controlling that from OBS. And it uses the desktop music, the desktop audio. And it plays a video in the background. That's technically a video. Um, and it plays some music with it. I'm trying to get this glove off so that I can like not contaminate my can when I open it. Um, but like it doesn't capture the audio, so that doesn't happen. Um, so that's, that's a thing. Uh, but I don't have like the video, like th the whole setup like put into StreamYard because I'm lazy. Now that Joe ste stepped away, we can tell some jokes. Too late, Rudy, I'm already back. Mmm, delicious. Take a short break and just chat for a minute. Is that ferrite bead near the small cap value caps? Yes. The ferrite bead is right here, right above the processor. And so I'm probably just going to steal that bead out of there. I couldn't find it uh, when I was ordering, I believe, was the thing. I'm like, oh, I'll just steal that out of the board. What SE is that reloaded board going into? That's a really good question. It's going to go into whoever wins the board. I'm giving the board away. Um, I'm not doing anything with that giveaway quite yet. Um, May is coming up, and that's May Pro, and I've got some commitments to the May Pro community to get May Pro stuff done. But after that, I'm going to do a giveaway stream and just give a whole bunch of stuff away. Um, I've got extra stuff. Like, I've got an extra spicy o'clock from Koba, for example. He was very kind and gracious to send me two for the price of one. Um, uh, because he was like, if you're going to review it, I'll just send you an extra one. It's one of those kinds of things. I'm like, okay, cool. And so I did several reviews, installed it. Um, and yeah, Dave, even with you, we installed it. Uh, we did a group install. Um, these things are impossible to get back on. Uh, and But I have the extra, and I don't have a machine to put it in into. So I'm just going to give it away. So yeah. K Pro Reloaded, yes. Is the hardware and software identical to the original, or is it basically just red and shiny with newness? It's identical. Um, to a point. Uh, the, the, the SE Reloaded board was done by Kai Robinson. Um, I put a link way back in the chat to where you can find the board. So you can also just go to macfx.com and get one of these boards if you want. You have to still build it yourself, but because as you can see, we've been streaming for two and a half hours and I've got F all done. So it just takes forever to build it. Um, but uh, it's basically a clone of the Revision 2 board with a couple of minor tweaks, uh, nothing super major. Um, and that's it. He has the full parts list. You can go and buy the parts. You follow the parts list and go buy the parts from wherever you want to buy the parts from. Um, uh, and you populate the board and you do it, it'll run everything in original SE will. Period. And let's do it. The layout is the same. It'll 
even I mean you can even see like the back of the board is the C layout and everything. It just it goes in your old SE and it's the, the whole purpose is say you got an SE board like this that has been battery bombed, right? The battery has destroyed this board. Uh, all these chips in here are all are just a pain in the butt. This board doesn't work. What you do is you populate this new board, right? And you take the custom chips. There's only like three or four. You take the custom chips, like this one here, the ROM chips, the, sw the uh, swim chip. And there are a couple chips up here you got to grab. Uh, and the rest of it's just aftermarket chips you can just buy at like Mouser, Mouser and Janko. You stuff them in there, bing, turn it on, it works. It's magic. It's magical. Rocky Hill just ordered two co tiny cops. Thank you. Two, meaning you ordered, you put in a single order of tiny comps and got two. Because remember, you get two for the price of one. Tiny comps, you get two in, two per order. Um, just because, why not? That's how we do it. Joe's Computer Museum. What if the winner doesn't have a Mac SE case? Well, then the winner probably shouldn't be entering the contest. If only I had a K-Pro. Wouldn't it be? Man. Oh, you're giving me ideas. Should I take... Because there's a universal K-Pro board that you can get. I wonder if I could do a K-Pro Reloaded. We take a K-Pro. Excuse me, I'm bourbon. Uh, we take a K-Pro. We strip the K-Pro down. Reverse... or copy the board, and re-release a K-Pro board, and do it just like the, the SE Reloaded. You want a K-Pro? Okay, just buy the board. <laughs> Rocky Hill, you're getting four. What is steel? Yes. They're, I mean, they're cheap, and they're tiny. They're adorable. Yes. Each order contains two tiny comp units, double the value. Since you ordered Axe 4 by accident instead of 2, I'm going to make sure that I edit this page real quick to make that bright bold red so like that doesn't accidentally happen happen again. Book and color. Toolbar toggle. Text color. Red. Update. Yay! Cool. Yep. Cool beans. Awesome sauce. I just ordered a fruity item and a two-pack of tiny comps. Everybody's ordering all the things! Wow! I'm just going to look at my orders while I'm taking a break. Yeah, look at all these orders. Mm-hmm. Ooh, one of my old friends from years ago, Joel McWilliams, uh, ordered something from me. That's cool. Blue scuzzies are back in stock, by the way. So if anybody is in the chat and they want blue scuzzies, I just put like 20 of them up there. I did my invent my blue scuzzy inventory last night. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I got enough parts to do another run. So there's another run up there. So if you need blue scuzzies, you can get them. If you don't know what the blue scuzzy is, here's an external unit, and I'd show you an internal unit, but they're all inside my machines, like this machine over here that you can't see. Ah. Inside my pumpkin tosh is also a blue scuzzy. What is the blue scuzzy, you ask? It is a super affordable, easy to use, and easy to build if you want to build it yourself, uh, scuzzy emulation device, scuzzy hard drive replacement device for your classic Mac. So if you got a classic Mac and you got old spinner drives in it and you're not really trusting them anymore, you can pick up one of these things. You just put an SD card in it with some images. You can get uh, if you if you're running a modern Mac, you can use the the program called Disk Jockey to create those images. Um, there are links to all of that stuff on over on the Blue Scuzzy website. So uh, 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 bluescuzzy.com. You know, uh, but you can get those and and get your old Mac up and running again and never have to worry about spinning disks again. They're inexpensive. They're easy to use. They're super easy to assemble. And all of us sellers give uh, support 
to everybody out there. So you have a problem with it, an issue with it, a glitch with it, some whatever, just reach back out to us and we'll make it right for you. You know, we're not going to complain. We're going to say, like some other folks in some other communities, we're just going to take care of you because that's what we do. That is a thing. K Pro Reloaded. Soon. Yes. This is my empty can. That goes there. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You ordered the LED bright, the LED bright tonight with the fruit logo. Oh, of course. Yes. Thank you for ordering that. Joe sells the best blue SCSI. Thank you, Rudy. Tom! Hey, Tom Barber. I didn't know you were in the chat. Uh, I sell blue scuzzies, but so does Tom Barber. So if you want to buy blue scuzzies from either of us, you can do that. You can go to bluescuzzy.com and we have link, there's links on there. You can pick the vendor of your choice and purchase from whichever one you want. I would like it if you buy them from me, but Tom is also equally excellent at building them. He also knows a lot more about their function. So his after support is a little bit better than mine. Um, uh, if you ever have any after support questions, I'm probably asking him the question to then answer your question, but that's fine. Yes. Just join the, the chat after Mike's stream. Yes. Everybody's here. I still have 17 people watching. That's crazy. I'm just sitting here chatting, staring at the screen while I'm taking a break from building this thing, having myself a nice, delicious sip of Diet Pepsi. Not sponsored. I just happen to like Diet Pepsi. It's cold. It came from the fridge. Ah. So let's get back to it. What are we doing? Um, we are doing another quick reminder for everybody watching, for everybody who stopped by. Thanks for stopping by tonight. I really do appreciate it. Um, your support, uh, especially patrons like uh, Justin Morgan, for example, um, and just watching uh, helps uh, the revenue streams for the museum back here, the museum for my my little hobby operation to continue to operate. Um, and that revenue allows me to do really cool things like continue to do these live streams or spend time reverse engineering wacky keyboard encoder chips for old computers so that those computers have replacement options for things you can't get anymore. Stuff like that. So I do appreciate everybody who stops by and does that. Um, hit the like button. Hit subscribe. That tells the YouTube algorithm, hey, uh, this this guy or gal or whoever likes this content. Let's show this content to other people that also watch similar things to what that person watched, basically. It, it helps get the name out and around. You have a blue SCSI that won't take the USB firmware update. You need to reflow the USB port at that. It's not that I'm stumped. Um, Justin, I can, I would be more than willing to help you figure that process out. If for some, this dude sucks, you should watch. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Welcome back from your stream. Um, Justin, uh, we also provide after sale support on that. If you continue to be stuck, uh, we are all uh, providing, I haven't put it on my site yet, but we're all pretty much providing a reflash service, um, for the cost of the sh cost of shipping, cost of a label. Um, you can send that back to me and I'll flash it for you. No problem. Um, and if you send it to me and I can't get it flashed, I'll send you a replacement unit pre-flashed, and then I'll figure the broken one out after the fact. I don't care. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. That's what we do. Justin D. Morgan put in the Patreon thing. Yeah, that's a thing. I can click the button. We can show that. Yes. Um, again, you can support me on Patreon. You can drop a dollar in the cup or two or three or a hundred or a thousand or however many dollars you want to do. That funding goes directly back into this operation. It's not one of your blue scuzzies. Well, who's blue scuzzy? Well, where'd you get it from? We'll figure it out. I don't care. If you got it from Tom, I'll swap it out. I'll make Tom give me one. I don't care. We'll figure it out. We'll all take care of you. Even though, so, I, I mean, I don't care. If, if it literally is just some weird flashing glitch and I just need to reflash it, I'll flash it for you. I don't go. I'll just do the flashing service. I don't care. We're here to help. Joe, me, Eric, K, Drake, all good sellers, yes. Tom, yes, I agree with you. Diet Pepsi is the best Diet Cola. Diet Coke is weird. Like, Diet Pepsi and Diet Cokes both have that weird Diet Cola flavor thing going, which is different than a regular cola. It, it's Diet Colas are their own little thing. That's fine. I like, I, I like Diet Colas, but... 
Pepsi is better. Like Diet Coke is like not sweet. Like they don't put enough sweetener in it. I don't know. Tech by Androda. And the issue is that the Windows throws a malfunctioning USB device error when I plug the blue pill in. Yes, Justin, there is a there is a specific thing you need to do. Stand by. I might actually still have that here. Yes. You need to go to this website right here. Right there. You need to go to that website, get that tool, and install the driver that comes with that tool. And that will solve your problem. Um, there is this weird thing that some blue scuzzies, uh, or not blue scuzzies, some blue pills have little glitchy weirdness issues with certain revisions of Windows. I don't know. It's a thing. But you install that, it fixes that glitch, and then you'll be able to flash it, no problem. And if that doesn't work again, send it to me and I'll, I'll flash it. No problem. But your five other blue, again, because the blue pills, the blue pills are all different. Um, the blue pill is just a cloned thing, right? Um, there's a hundred different sellers all selling it and the ST, the, the, the chip on it, there are clone, there are clones of clones of clones of the chip as well. Those, those chips are cloned like, I don't know, they're cloned like that bad episode of the second season of Star Trek, the next generation with Pulaski, with, Ka with, with Dr. Pulaski and the clones. It, they're just everywhere, right? Um, and so some of them have weird USB support, but if you use this universal driver, it solves the problem. I ran into that problem when I was uh, doing reflashes. Um, my new my um, new batch that I got of chips didn't have any problem. Uh, but some of the old reflashes, I had to reflash before sending stuff back out. Some of the ones that I had previously flashed did have a problem. It's just, it's random. Time for me to go. Night, everyone. See you, Rudy. Bye. Ugh, fake chips. The thing is, the fake the fake chip is not a problem. Like, they all work, so we're not worried about it. Up the Long Ladder, Season 2, Star Trek STNG. Thank you, Mike's Mac Shack. Yes. Blue pill equals Arduino. Yeah, basically. It's kind of an Arduino-like device. It's not exactly an Arduino, but it basically is. Mike, you actually have Star Trek The Next Generation episodes memorized. You and I need to talk. I'm a huge Trek fan, so yeah. No, not that episode. More like a teensy 4.0. Yeah, yeah. Great farm episode. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway, let's get back to um, doing some things. I'm not quite done for the night yet, so we're gonna, just going to keep going. So we need to switch a doodle back to bench cam. Because we need to take this ferrite bead out of this board. Right here. L4. Where is it? It is approximately. I don't freaking know. There. This one. Looks like it's this one. Yep, I got it. I'll figure it out. board has been so, well, I mean, look at it. It's all mottled. It's been so destroyed. I mean, it still smells like bad capacitors. Um, after it's, it, this thing has been ultrasonically cleaned and it still smells like nasty. It's just the worst. There's this little ferrite bead. It's got to be like, it's basically got to have no value to it at all. As far as like, it's, it's actual... It's, I mean, on the list, it's called ferrite bead. It doesn't even have a value. Okay. Get that in there. You can do it. What's your problem? 
Oh, it's got a little. It's got a little uh, burr on it. I had to kind of get off there. There we go. It's in there now. Cool. Solder. There we go. That's in place. Mark that off the list. Ferrite bead. QN or Q1, 2N3904. Now I know I didn't buy those because I have a freaking billion of them. They are the world's most generic NPN transistor. Oh my gosh, I don't actually have any. Stand by. Um, I use those in a project. Which project do I use those in? I use those in. Which project is that? Soft card. Soft card projects. 3906s, 3904s. See? I got lots. I got a whole bunch. So that's why I didn't order extras, because I knew I just had them. The 3904. Deep Space Nine. Yes. Yes. Deep Space Nine is like. Oh. Ah! Oh. Deep Space Nine is awesome. This is the fattest. These are the fattest holes for a 29, 29, 3904 I have ever seen. Let's make sure this is actually a 3904. Two in 3904. Yeah, I, I don't know why they're the leads in this are so gigantic, but they are what they are. So we deal. Yeah, that one's in there. Get that soldered in, and then we can do resistors. Lots and lots of resistors, just like lots of capacitors earlier. 3904, standard NPN transistor. Cool, that's done. Okay. Resistors. Let's pick a random value resistor that has a lot of them in the package. Let's do that. Shall we? I don't know. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I wonder where my glove will go. There's some big ones. So these are 150 ohm. Not on the first page. 150 R12. Okay. R12 is generally speaking here. Okay. R12. One five and one zero. Yep, that's correct. R12. Any more 150s? R35 and 36. Got two of them down here. R35 and 36. Where are you? You are down here. Stand by, I have a capacitor I gotta like fix that fell out of the board.
several of them that that happened to. Nice. Nice. It's just me not paying attention. Just don't want to go down. Well, they're just, I'm just going to make them the best I can. That one's good. We're going to remove this one. We're going to remove this one because it's messed up. You know, I really, really want to zig a zig. Ah, Stand by. I'm just fixing these couple capacitors that they shifted in the board during the soldering process, and so they're like sticking up from the board. I'm just trying to get them flush to the board again. And failing to do so miserably. And this joint doesn't want just doesn't want to clear to allow me to do the thing. Well, poopy. Don't be a poopy. Be nice. Be a nice person. You know you wanna. We know you want to be a nice person. You want to be a nice capacitor. A good capacitor. You don't want to give Joe problems. No problems for Joe. Joe's a good guy. He's fun. There we go. That's Now we can solder that back in place. Okay. <sighs> Detour. And the other one was right here. There's a couple of them that I didn't splay the, the pins out correctly, so they kind of fell out of the board. And there aren't any others that are like that. Okay, we're good. We can continue. Cool. Um, what did we put in? A resistor somewhere, somewhere down there, down there. Okay, that's fine. Um, we were doing one fifties. The force capacitor is strong. Yes. Sad Mac is here. Eep. Woot. Oh no! The most common bead is ferrite bead 43 bead on lead Z equals 6 8 ohm at 100 megahertz. Great! Thank you. Alamorain 1 2 3. <laughs> yes, that is an awful, awful. Ad. Second, Shap! Yes. Unknown USB device port reset failed. I think you just got a funky blue scuzzy there, Justin. Um, we just need to get you a new one, um, probably, or diagnose yours or something like that. 
I mean, if it's still working, it's still working, but yeah. Moving on. Um, where were we? We were doing not that. We were doing 150s. Parts. Move out of the way, parts. 150s, 150s, 150s. R35 and 36 right there. So the R35 and 36 are down here. That's right. I stopped because I noticed those capacitors were floating up in the air. R35. R36. Mm -hmm. And those are, that's all for the 150s. So we'll put those away. Make sure that's the actual bag those go in. Yes. Next value. Next value is uh, having problems reading it. 3.3K. Because they don't have the actual value, only the code. 3K3. Okay. So we go back here and we find any 3.3s on there. No, 3.3s. We've got our 16, 21. 26, 27, 41, and then all of those. There we go. Cool. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Cool. Now, resistors, you don't really have to worry too much about putting stress on them. They're tough little guys. Okay. Get these all lead formed. What time is it? 9.48. We'll probably see if we can get the resistors done tonight and then we'll we'll call it we'll call it at that point. We've been streaming for what? Oh, three hours now. Yeah. Just a just a Sunday slash Monday night hangout. So many projects I want to get back to that I've just been cooking for so long. I want to get back to JCM1, my kind of namesake. Um uh, JCM1 is my single board computer based on a 6502 processor. I have a whole series of like 15 or 16 videos on building that thing. Um, the computer proper is done. It's complete. But it is missing one really crucial component, and that is a, uh, well, it's missing two major components. Um, component one would be uh, video output. Um, right now, you, you can only talk to the thing over a serial console, and that's okay. That's fine. Um, but that's kind of poopy, right? Like, I want real video output. And I've been, I designed it, or I started the design of a composite video output, or NTSC video generation output for it with 256 color support, which is really cool. But I'm not sure if I want to stay with it that way, or if I want to like design a VGA solution that's a little bit more universal. I don't know. I don't know. Understood, Justin. Thank you. It's not working because it's mid-update. It has the new bootloader, but no blue SCSI firmware. Ah, gotcha. So you've got yeah, you were able to do the first half, but not the second half. So in theory, you can flash the you are technically able to flash the USB firmware from, from the ST-Link port. The JCM would be good to put inside of a dumb terminal. Yeah, because you could just like wire the dumb terminal back inside itself and have the computer on the inside if you wanted to, in theory. JCM1 is really just, it's it's a single board, it's it's like Grant Searle's single board uh, 6502 uh, computer. 
or you can also think of it kind of like a 6502 version of the RC 2014. It's, it, yeah. Um, anyway. Things. R16. There's 17. 16 is over here. R16. R16. R21. It's going to be over here somewhere. R26. Can't, you guys can't see it because I'm not doing it over the bench. Not that there's really much to see. I'm just stuffing resistors and holes. R27. Right above R26. R41. Just going to be down here somewhere. And then 43 through 48. 43. 44. 45. Forty-six. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. What the hell is forty-eight? R forty-eight. Hello, R48. So this is the lowest right corner of the board. Where the heck could 48 be? It's all the way up here. That's in a weird position. Okay. Up there. All right. All right. Cool. So those are all done. We're done with 3.3s. These are the 3.3s. Orange, red, red, three. Orange, orange, red. Yes, three, three, and two zeros. Um, let's go in here. Yes. These go over here. Cool. What's next? Random pick. Where we got these? Two, uh, 10K. Okay. So we need to run the list and find all the 10Ks. That one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Twenty-thirteen. Twenty-fourteen. Twenty-fifteen. Twenty-sixteen. It's weird. I, I intentionally avoid, I've been for several years now, intentionally avoiding getting any si other single board computers to play around with for a couple of reasons. One, I don't have the time. <laughs> but two, um, I'm trying not to pollute my knowledge or experience of what is out there so that if I come up with any ideas, I can say, I came up with that my idea myself. I'm not copying anybody. So, yeah. For example, one of the uh, one of the ideas I really pride myself on in JCM one is 
the uh, audio subsystem. So I'm using generic off-the-shelf AY3. I don't freaking remember what the chips are. I'll just grab JCM1 and look at it. Stand by. There it is. There is JCM1. Still all in one piece. Wire wrapped goodness on the back. The audio chips are what I use are the AY3 8910s. Same what sound chip that's used on like the mocking board. Um, those things were pretty ubiquitous. Uh, everything that did not use a SID chip used one of these chips basically um, because it had three channel sound with changeable, um, uh, with. Uh, Changeable frequency and timber and all that thing. And the only thing it didn't have was like frequent was like um, a duty cycle, um, and it had three three channels each. So uh, I was looking at stuff. I'm like, if I do this right, let's let's go back and let's we talk about this for just a half second. The mocking board, for example, the mocking board um, uses two 6522s to control two AY3 9989 tens, but it doesn't have to. Right, because the 8910 has enough pins on it to control two of those chips. Not only that, it has enough pins on it to control other stuff. Right, so like I did, I kind of redesigned that uh, so that one sound via, and it's I call it the sound via because that's it that, that's its whole job. Controls two of these sound chips, and then it controls these little things right here. These are these are digital potentiometers. And these potentiometers are are, are hooked up. Uh, one, they're multi. You can see three of them. There, there's two potentiometers per chip, and each chip or each potentiometer is hooked up to one of the sound channels coming out of the AY3. And what that allows me to do is I can take these potentiometers. I should say, yeah, each one's coming in, and then the audio out of each potentiometer goes either to left or right. So by sending values to these potentiometers through the sound via, you can have stereo independently panable stereo audio for each sound channel. So this thing has six channel stereo audio on it. And I think that's friggin' cool. That was one of my favorite little things that I did uh, with this thing. Um, there's a, like other little things too. Like I used a single chip, um, a single chip serial interface. So I didn't have to have a whole bunch of extra uh, a uh, whole bunch of extra support chips and support circuitry. And I did, so I wouldn't have to have like a positive 12, negative 12 volt stuff. It just does the thing. So yeah. when will the JCM one kit be available for purchase? Once I finish it, I got to finish it. Justin, I got to finish it. There's no video output. This thing has no video output right now. It's just a serial port. I want good graphics. I want good graphics in this thing. I want this to be a stellar 8-bit machine. I want this thing to be not, I mean, I can't I can't say on par with the, the Commodore 64, but I want it to be good, right? I want this thing to have a, a dedicated graphic subsystem, for example, so you can be like sprites and tiles, so it can do real graphics. I also want it to have an independent bitmap mode, so you can be like, okay, well, go do this thing. Hi, hi video chip, go do the thing. And the computer can just continue doing its thing, and it's not like trying to manually draw the screen like the Apple II does, right? So that's what—that's the big thing—is the audio output. Like, it's got lots of other cool things. Like, um, I have, um, I have, I designed a keyboard for it, which goes right in here, which I'm not showing. Which is—it's actually really good that I designed that keyboard because that code that for the custom keyboard I designed for this. Why I designed it, I don't know, so I could learn how keyboards work. That code ended up be going into my universal keyboard encoder for the Apple II. That's the same code, just with some slight modification to work for the pinouts. So, like, you know, anyway, um, I, this thing has um, joypad controls right here because the AY3s have extra uh, input output pins. So I'm using the VIA to control the AY3s to control output pins. So it has uh, has Atari compatible joypads. It's cool. It's it's like going to be this cool little eight bit whoop de do. It's going to be great. I just got to finish. I got 
sidetracked by a whole bunch of other projects like five years ago, and it's just been sitting. Right now, I, can, I mean, I could plug this in, turn it on, and work right now. I think. I think it would. I mean, I haven't turned... It hasn't been on since... When was the last time I worked on it? Uh, Kansas Fest 2019. So, it's been a while. What's my main goal for the JCM1? I think I already said it. I want a kick butt 6502 computer that you can build yourself that has all of the bits and pieces of a classic um, mid 80s kick butt 8 bit computer. I don't know how to say it. Awesome video with awesome color graphics, awesome sound. Keyboard and mouse, well, mouse, I mean, it'd be serial port something or other, but keyboard and uh, peripheral inputs. So a couple serial ports um, and, and a keyboard port, which I'll probably end up just like making it USB keyboard or something like that, whatever. Um, so that you can just do whatever you want to, and you can learn how these old computers worked. That's the whole point. Like, you will get this kit. My, my idea was you will get the kit, Ben Eater style, but cooler. Um, you get this kit. And I would, the kit would walk you, it wouldn't be just like, here's components and a component layout. No, it's going to be a step-by-step -step, um, instruction manual. Here's the processor. Install the processor. Now let's learn about the processor. Here's, here's what it does, right? Here are the audio chips. Here's the circuit. Here's a simplified diagram and a complex diagram of the audio circuit. Here's how it works and why it works that way. So you can assemble this board step by step by step and learn what the machine is doing while you're building it. That was my idea. Maybe you can make the JCM module. That was kind of my idea because if you go back and look at it, that, that was one of the um, original goals. If you go back and look at my, my video series on that, um, you'll see that the idea was you could, in theory, build it. It would be a final board. But it was designed. It, it was it was designed and built up in a way that you could like po po populate a CPU into it and connect a couple of little extra external circuits, and it'll run. It won't have all the extra stuff on it, but it could run. And you could see what it, see what it was doing. Then you could add the serial port and the ROM to figure out how the ROM code worked and and stuff like that. You know that was kind of the idea. For the video output, would it help to have some video cards on hand to tear apart and or tinkle with? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, only because uh, because this is kind of a custom design, I have to create a custom interface between the computer itself and the video circuitry. So uh, pre-existing video circuitry isn't going to help me. Um, I have to design my own thing, basically. If I wanted, if I want it to be its own independent solution, I could do that. I meant on a backplane so you could release the parts you have done now and fund the development of the video part. Um, in theory, I could do that. In theory. Um, it has a, a well-laid-out uh, memory layout, uh, I.O. interface system. So you could just, uh, you basically, just like with the Apple II, is you could just present the bus on cards and have, like, 8 to 16 slots that are presented um, that each have their own address space. You know, I can do that, but... Um, I don't need the thing with the JCM one is I don't need it to fund the development of the video part. Uh, th the museum operation is completely self-sufficient right now. So I don't need to like sell stuff like that to fund the next thing. If I do want to do it, I just do it. Um, I just haven't because I've got busy doing other things. That's it. Consider that a pre-order. I better get back on it though. JCM1 is just the coolest. It's the coolest little machine. Just go back and uh, let me go find. I'll, I'll draw. I'll drop my links. I was kind of thinking that myself, but make it a small PCB to lay inside of a dumb terminal to get used to that. Yeah. Um. I'll go. I'm gonna find my my uh, playlist about JCM1. I'll drop in the chat. There's the playlist. So if you guys want to grab that later and take a look at it, you can. But 
you can see see what went into the designing of this guy. So anyway, let's get let's get back to it. Um, we need to. We're continuing resistors, right? Yes. Uh, we are doing. What are these ten Ks? Ten K, one zero in orange. Yeah, it looks about ten. So that'd be three one zero 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 ten K. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, lead former. Lead for more. I don't know why that popped into my head. Little Peter, litter, little Peter and the Wolf for you. Um, uh, 10Ks. Here we go. Cool. R17. Need to grab this where I won't bend leads around like I did with that one. R17 is 20, so it's going to be up here. 15, 16, 17, R17. R17. Somebody's badooping me. Or Badoopin in one of uh, the discords. I hear it Badoopin. R31, which will be down here. R31. Mm -hmm. R31. R34 should be right next door to it. It is. There is something is really hopping over in the chat or over in the Discord chat, whatever whatever channel it is. It's beeping like crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear it. R34. And there's one other one. I'm missing. It's got to be on this first page, right? R1. Yeah. There we go. It's all the way up here. R2. R1, up here. Up here, R1. I need to check this out. I don't know what's going on. $9.99 super sticker from Justin D. Morgan. Woo! Thank you, Justin. It's not your discard that's blowing up. Oh, it's that Discord. We demand attention. Joe, we're calling you. Wait, hold on. What? Badoop Joe. Why are, wh like, what? Why? Why? You're just all just badooping me as a joke? Joe, we're calling you. We demand attention. We love you. Sorry, but not sorry. Look here. Eight pings are all you need. We've been caught. We're being idiots. Please continue. You jerks. I love you to death. You don't suck. Thanks, Mike. I do appreciate that. Woot! Um, yeah, apparently everybody in Discord just started, decided to start badooping me as a joke. Thanks, Tom. You guys are awesome. I have cool friends. Um, R1 is done. Cool. What's next? I don't know. Something with a lot of value. 10 ohms. Sure. Why not? Let's see here. We demand attention. You guys are funny. Okay. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> the notifications are still on. Yes. I just, yes. See, the thing is, if I turn the notifications off, then I'll forget to turn them back on, guys. That's the thing. That's the thing. How many 10 ohm resistors do I need? One, two, three, four. four. One, two, hoo -hoo, four, crunch, four. 
How many 10 ohm resistors does it require? The world may never know. Okay. Clearly no, now you're live and didn't silence your Discord, yes. Yeah, I don't sil I can't silence this. So I silence all of my dis I, like I'm in a hundred different channels. Um, and I only silence the discords that I don't have to pay attention to a lot, but a lot of them I, I, I have to keep them open because there's stuff going on. I have to know about it. But if I go back and silence it, I will utterly forget about it. Again, like I've said many, many times, I am a I I'm a, a golden retriever. Like, if it's not bright and yellow and isn't, like, round and bouncing in front of my face, I don't know it exists. It's just a thing. So, yeah. Anyway, 10 ohms. 10 ohms. Lots of 10 ohm resistors. Lots of tin ohm resistors for your life. I have a vendor in, in Columbus, Ohio. Um, he has, <laughs> they have weekly meetings. And uh, in these weekly meetings, they have these, he's, these notes they print out. And as a joke, the meetings are labeled salient no uh, meeting notes for your bathroom. Because it's supposed to be like, Bathroom reading or something is the joke. Dave's vintage Apple Tech, five dollars for your JCM one project. Woot! Thanks, Dave. I appreciate every super chat and every super sticker everybody sends. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Um. Um. Stand by. Yep, we're going back to installing things. My batteries are getting kind of discharged. I may call this call this early. We'll see. I mean, early for me. It's getting yeah, it's ten o'clock. We're getting kind of getting there. I do have to work in the morning, unfortunately, and I do have places I have to actually go to tomorrow. So it is a thing. Um, ten ohms. Ten ohms. There are not. Yep, R two. Right here. In theory, I could just like turn my speakers off. Um, so that one's done. R6 and R7. R6. R7. And finally, one last 10 ohm resistor, R19, which is in this general vicinity here, 14, it's actually over here. R19. Those are all flush to the board and under sticking up weird. No. Cool. Let's get these put in place. I'll just get a, get a bunch knocked out while we, have, while we have a bunch in the board. Here, suck away from me. Pull nastiness away from face. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to turn my speakers down. I love I love that all the badoops are going on, but again, golden retriever. It's just grabbing my attention over and over and over again. Uh, 
Ah, silence. Silence is golden. To all my friends in the chat or who are listening, who are at VCF East, again, I want to say that I am envious of you for multiple reasons. Primarily because I didn't get to hang out with you guys and gals, so I wasn't there. But I'm also envious because there was a whole bunch of really cool equipment at VCF East this time. Uh, of course, there's always a whole bunch of cool equipment there, but there was one specific exhibit that was there that was just like, I, I want... Um, so that exhibit was for weather star systems. And it's a part of a class of systems that are basically they're video bulletin board systems. So there are folks that just are into that kind of thing. Um, and so on top of the weather star, they also had like units, head units for the preview channel. Um, back when the back from the 80s and 90s when those were run on like Amigas and stuff. Uh, but what they also had there was my holy grail of those. And that was a TechScan MSI Spectra Gen 4, which is a very, very, very old unit from the mid-80s. And the reason why that is my, kind of my holy grail, is because I always thought it was the coolest thing since sliced bread when I was a kid. Um... Well, I have to go back and explain it. So when we moved to this town, the little local cable company, little independent cable company, was using one of those SpectraGen units for the just the local info channel. You could advertise on there, and it showed the date and time and temperature and all of that stuff. It was the coolest thing. Um, and so I just loved that thing. It was just the neatest thing. I never knew what it was when I was a kid until many, 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 many years later. Now, here's where the story comes in. Um... I did some work for a local organization that happened to have an old television that constantly monitored uh, the channel that for years and years and years and years uh, that that channel was on. They just had that channel on at all times. And so this monitor, which is now in my possession, has the has screen burned into it. The graphics from that channel. So it's just kind of like nostalgia magic. Ron's computer video is $9.99. Your weekly reminder that Joe is a kind and gentle person worthy of your love and friendship. Also tacos. Tacos are awesome. And so are you, Ron. Thank you. Woot! Um, but anyway, um, so that was... I, I have this TV over here. There, this, this, this monitor that has that burned into it. And it's just like, oh, nostalgia right in the feels. And so then I like started doing research. This was a couple of years ago. I started doing research. I'm like, what is this thing that made this video? And I eventually found out that it was a SpectraGen unit. It was a Spectra Tech Scan MSI SpectraGen. Um, I think the one we had was a was a, uh, a SpectraGen three, but you know you're splitting hairs there. So at VCF East, lo and behold, somebody has a Tech Scan MSI freaking SpectraGen four up and running. I'm like, ah, ah. And so uh, through my many contacts I had, I was like asking everybody, you, fit, you need to find out for me whose that is because I need to talk to that person and ask them if they want to sell it to me. They probably don't. But really what I'm looking for is how the heck do I find one? Like I've seen the, uh, I'm by I've seen, I mean, there are historical records of them of having come up on eBay. But they're just such a weird item, right? Like, they're weird, and they're not. there's not a lot of them around. So, like, how do you find one? Because I want one. They are coming back next year, Joe. Good. I was able to find out the person of that entire group that, that was doing the exhibition, doing the exhibit, who actually owns it. And I tried to friend them on Twitter, but I don't think they responded. 
I don't blame them. I'm kind of weird. Um, cool. Those are in. Cool. Yay! I think we're gonna we're gonna call that board build uh, for today. Let's switch cameras to face cam. We're gonna chat for a few minutes. Yeah, so I want one of those units. If you stand by for a minute, I'll go grab that TV. I'll show you. It's the coolest thing. Mmm. Sweaty. Here. Stand by. Where is it? It's right up here. I believe this is it. Uh-huh. 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 Yep. And piles of things fell over. You'd think I was in Steve's basement. Um, stand by. Stand by. Luckily, that was only an empty box. So here it is. Here's the unit. <clears throat> Needs recap. Yes, it does. Because it was running 24-7 for 100 friggin' years. Um, so there's that. Um, it might be hard to get on camera, but maybe we can do a little side action there. You can kind of see the screen burn in it. It has those graphics screen burned into it. This is like a little a little local legend of my little town here. This is like local town history. Right? Hi, Steve. <laughs> so, and, you know, it's, you can see it's got, it's got the, it's, it's the connections for, as a video monitor, as a pro, pro video monitor. Um, so I want to, I want the unit, the machine that can plug into this. So I can plug this into that computer and on the original hardware, show the original info channel from my little town. That's what I want to do. But I got to friggin' find a unit first. Fun fact. These were mass produced by Panasonic. This is the exact same video monitor that was branded for the TI-99 4A. And you want to know how I know? Because I have one right over there that says Panasonic on it, or it says TI-99 or Texas Instruments, but it looks identical to this. It is exactly the same unit, with the exception of the connectors on the back a little bit different. That's it. So yeah, this is like literally local town history in my little town. What size screen is that? That is a, that's like a nine or 10 inch, 12. I think it's 12, stand by. CT110MA, so it's probably like 11 inch, something like that. CT110MA. Yep. Whatever that means. You can look it up. 13 inch, 12 inch, something like whatever. Mm-hmm. For commercial use only. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> so, yeah. I want to get that up and running. That would be so super cool. little local town history. What other local town history do I have in this, this shop? I've got a Performa... 630 CD with the DOS card in it that came from a person who is still one of my customers uh, 20 years later. Um, this machine back here, I've talked about this before. This came from a local engineering firm, a gentleman with a PhD in, in um, uh, whatever his engineering was, PhD was. Um, he had basically all of the letters. Lives right up the street. Well, he doesn't anymore. He moved, he moved out. Um, but for years and years, he just lived right up the street from me. Literally like a block up the street, this guy lived up for, lived, lived for me. And I never knew it. Um, this guy is world-renowned because uh, he, he, he did all of the mathematical calculations and stuff to determine the forces applied to your head and spine in motorcycle and vehicle accidents by the restraints that you wear. And so he had this business where he was effectively a, an expert witness um, in these cases. 
of where people were like, you know, where people would either not wear their restraints properly, not wear them at all, or the restraint actually caused damage because it was de designed incorrectly. And so he was a professional witness on all these high profile cases. And he lives like two houses up from me. And so this is the computer he used, it, he ran his business on in the 80s. It's cool stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. So we're going to wrap 72. See, how is there, how are there 72 messages in this chat in that period of time? How did you guys do that? How did you put 72 messages in there? I, I, I just, I'll just have to go watch, read that later. There's a lot of cool stuff going on in our little, a little, uh, sub, sub, subreddit, sub discord going on there. Anyway. So yeah. <sighs> so here we are. Thanks for hanging out with me today or tonight. It was fun. Been streaming for three and a half hours. Um, tonight, we worked on the SE Reloaded pretty much universally, um, mainly because uh, I didn't feel like doing my responsibilities, like building the three Blue Scuzzy orders that I have. Um, <laughs> but I'll get them built and sent out. That's no, that's no big deal. I always do. So, yeah. Um, Kansas Fest. Yes, I will be. I will likely be at Kansas Fest. I am registered for Kansas Fest for the in-person Kansas Fest. Um, as long as, uh, COVID stuff doesn't get crazy in that area at that time, I'll be there. If the COVID rates are weird and a whole bunch of people like decide to come and they don't wear masks, or, like uh, I'm eval it's, it's a, it's an ongoing evaluation. Uh, I, then I'll, I'll probably attend virtually. Um, so yeah, if you are, if you don't want, if you do want to come to Kansas Fest, go ahead and come to Kansas Fest, go to kansasfest.org, register, Stop by and you play nothing for like four days straight. We play with Apple twos for four days straight. We stay up until one in the morning. We solder things. We get burns. We program stuff. We play a whole bunch of games and it's awesome. It is an awesome community. And let's not forget the garage giveaway, which I don't know if they're going to do this year, but if they do do it this year, basically it's a big pile of, of Apple twos and Macs and peripherals and a whole bunch of stuff that people just bring by to give away. And then you get to rummage through that all week long and just pick and pick and pull stuff out of it. It's great. If you can't come in person, that's fine. I understand. There may be many reasons why you don't want to. Uh, you can't, or it, you have you're immune compromised, so you can't be around a whole bunch of people, or you just don't want to be around a whole bunch of people because you don't want to get the con SARS, as we used to call it back in the day. Whatever. Um, they do have a virtual option. Uh, we did virtual for the past two years because of the. Uh, because of the pandemic, um, but we're gonna we're going back to in person, but we have that hybrid option, so you can still grab some stuff. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go, I'll look forward to seeing you there. It'll be cool. You didn't care for the Asmer episodes you did a while back. No, did, neither did most people. Only one of those episodes did really well, and it was the very first episode of fixing the Atari 2600. So then I tried to do another one, and that one tanked. I'm like, I don't know what I did with the first one to like hit all the YouTube buttons, but whatever. It is what it is. You're going to try to make it out there this year, and you see how much vacation time I have left? Yeah. Plan a budget to attend a person? Yeah! Mm-hmm. Understand. I'll go there and attend virtually from the hallway. That's fine too. I mean, if you want to physically attend, but don't want to like be around, you could like you could in theory hold yourself up in 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 your little dorm room, and just watch the events over the internet if you want. As long as Rockhurst Wi-Fi isn't sucking that day, the internet at Rockhurst University is notoriously crappy. Um, so yeah, I will put my order in for an Apple II. Make sure you grab it out of the pile. <laughs> You two recommended the Atari one to me just after you posted it. Yeah, like, you I don't know what it, it's the thing. So, anyway. Um, yes, and that's the thing, too, Dave, uh, with the garage giveaway. Um, anything that you take from the garage giveaway, you have to use it or give it to someone else for $0. There is no picking up and selling of stuff in the garage giveaway. The idea is that it goes to people who want or need their Apple II equipment. Period. And that's what... I did. I grabbed a whole bunch of stuff. I've got a whole bunch of, like, last time I went, I got a whole bunch of um, 
manuals and stuff up here to complete my like my Apple IIgs, for example. I got a couple of extra Apple II, Apple IIs that I use. Uh, one went into the clear case Apple II, and the other one sits over here and in, in, is a um, uh, is a test bed Apple II for testing stuff. You know, so that's you got to keep those things. Realistically, I'll attend virtually the first two days in per in person and in person the next two days. Yeah, I mean whatever. So, yep, I will see if I can, if there is a garage giveaway, I don't know if there is going to be this year. I haven't read a lot of the details about the, the um, schedule this year. Um, I'll see if I can grab one. I wish I could go to their KFS to pick up some 2C parts. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. KFS is awesome. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I'm kind of, I'm running a little bit on empty. It has been a long stream. So, I'm going to uh, wrap things up for tonight. Again, we worked on the... Uh, we worked on the Mac SE Reloaded. We got a lot more of the board populated. We still got a lot of the board to go, but that is cool. No problem there. Um, coming up uh, is Maypro. Again, we're going to be doing Maypro uh, here in May. I have a K-Pro back here that I'm going to yank apart, and we're going to play with it and figure out what, what, why, when, how, where, what, when, who about it. I have no plan. We're just going to, I'm just going to wing it because that's what I do because, again, uh, golden retriever tennis balls. Um, yeah. Uh, so thanks everybody for stopping by. Thanks Steve for saying thank you. Yes. Um, remember to hit the like button. If you haven't done that, smash the crud out of it, hit it an odd number of times, one or three or five or seven to make sure it's a thumbs up for me. Um, and also hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed again, those two things tell YouTube that, uh, people who watch the same kind of content that you do might want to see my content. So it'll suggest me to those other people. Um, follow me on Twitter. You can uh, support me on Patreon. You can get things from jcm-1.com like blue scuzzies or my universal keyboard encoders or whatever that also helps out the channel a lot. Thanks to everybody who super chatted and super sticker tonight. You are super awesome. And with that, we gonna say nighty night. Sleep tight and don't let the 8-bit spike. Bye, everybody.